Hey guys, it's me, Kelly. Uh, welcome, 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 and welcome, Mark Sargent. <laughs> this is so exciting. So exciting to have you on here. Oh, holy crap. I was um with Mark, you were on here like eight years ago. I just found out it's eight eight years ago. You are one of the first people <laughs> that ever interviewed me. And I couldn't, at the time you were on a network, so I couldn't put it on my channel. So I couldn't reference, I couldn't tell you exactly when it was, but I'm 90% sure it was 2015. Okay. Wow. I wow. know. So, I know. And you actually, I actually, there was a lot of advice. We won't get into it necessarily about producers, which <laughs> I gleaned off you because uh, you were doing different things back eight years ago. And it was very, very helpful. So thank, thank you for that. You. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm, glad it was, I'm glad that was helpful. It was. It was because you were you were doing a lot of a lot of things. You were. I mean, I had just gotten on social media, but you had been on for a, a while and were were doing very well. And I had no idea what I was doing. So here, <laughs> here we are, eight years later, and a lot has happened since then. Oh, which is why I had you watch the documentary because. I was figured, well, at the very least, you at least should have known, you know, what, what happened two years after we talked. Oh, exactly. It looks like everything uh, blew up. It's really funny because when people are on my show, you know, especially back then, yeah. like, they tended to really blow up after that. Yeah. Uh, whatever their movement was or whatever was going on, it just really blew up. And that's, well, that's why I was very cho choicy or choosy about the people that were on there. You were, you were ahead of the wave back then. There was a, I didn't talk to a lot of people in 2015, but uh, you, you know, you, you were kind of like the, um, uh, the woman from, I think I told you the, from true television who was trying to put together like a sizzle reel. She wanted to do a, um, a reality television show and she was she was putting it back together back in 2015 it was way too early and uh they fired her for it because they said hey what do you got rebecca for a show she goes let me tell you i got a show flat earth the reality show and they were like wow yeah so you're gonna be cleaning out your desk <laughs> and that's what they did and then and but but fast forward to after when the documentary came out and when the VP of True Television, the one that fired her, saw that documentary, which you saw, uh, she called her up and said, look, I am so sorry. She goes, I had no idea. But to be fair, a lot of people don't know this is producers are paid to say no for a living. That's what they do. They are, they are there to screen out ideas. And so they say no 90 percent of the time. It's like no pass 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 oh hey this looks looks interesting i mean if you you would have gone to most of the producers back in 2015 and said oh yeah flat earth reality show it's gonna be a great idea no <laughs> no it's a terrible idea i mean we we didn't even have enough people to fill the show we were just we were just plugging in anyone we could and <laughs> matt boylan who you saw in the documentary uh they 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 didn't even know what to do with him because they realized even back then it's like yeah that man does not play well with others we have got to do something. So. I knew I liked you for a reason. I don't. I don't play well with others either. No, not like not like Matt. Not like Matt. Matt. Matt was like a Snickers diva. Um, he he was he was one of those guys that absolutely the spotlight. He is like no, the spotlight is mine. You know, he was he was he was amazing guy. I will say this. I mean, you know, he was uh, Canadian born i think and raised in montreal and then he went to hollywood to try to make it in acting it was a hell of a, a realistic painter uh, but he tried to make it in acting and it really didn't pan out and he so he just started doing stand-up and he could do it in you know english and french yeah. and then he finally got he kind of dug into flat earth before anybody did nobody was listening to him because these concepts you know were way way out there but remember remember the documentary where he said he wouldn't talk to the media because there's some artists. You know, they're like, you know, they get that whole aloof thing going. Where it's like, no, media, you know, I'll deal with them on my time. It's like, who are you, Prince? What the hell, right? <laughs> and so by the time, and so they would come back to me and they would say, all right, do you want to talk about Flat Earth? It's like, yeah, sure, I'll talk about it. <laughs> and once I'd, I'd racked up like 10 or 12 interviews, people producers interns were calling me because i was the only guy they could find 
And then when Matt finally is like, okay, I'm ready to talk to the media now, nobody cared anymore because they're like, no, sorry, we already got a guy. And, yeah. you know, the, the movement's already taken off. And then he got really angry, really, really yeah. angry. But it still sounded crazy. I'll tell you, I'll share a story with you real fast. There was, um, he was living in Vegas. He was trying to, he was trying to get married to an American for citizenship of all things. And he did in Vegas. And uh, I remember him making, after the documentary came out, he tried to sue the producers and he was calling up all these attorneys. And so he makes this video where he's just yelling at the camera. He's going, he goes, I've called 14 different law firms and told them how this movie stole flat earth from me and no one will call me back. And I don't know why. And I'm going, dude, do you even hear yourself right now? It's like you're leaving messages on law firms answering machines telling them that that I mean, I would have played it for the entire office. You know, it's like it's like, oh no, 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 oh, no, they stole flat earth from you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, come here. You gotta listen Is to that this trademarked message. flat earth? The what? Is it copyrighted? Uh, no, uh, no, nothing in flat earth is copyrighted. Even okay. to this day, even to this day, nothing friend. is copyrighted. How you can't well one you can't copy the model because the model's been around forever. Um, now, if somebody I suppose wanted to um, make a movie and call it Flat Earth, you could you could copyright something along those lines, but they never did. So it's like all right, well then, all right, fine. Anyway, sorry, we should probably introduce. We, we should probably do an introduction. Where it's like, who the hell am I? Da, da, um, da, here's Mark. I'm so sorry. I no, just no, 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 uh, yeah, but everybody knows the concept. So eight years ago, what I did was uh, back. Well, let's go back nine years ago. Nine years ago, I was bored. Okay. Uh, I never got married or had kids, so I had a lot of free time on my hands. Kids, and if you never money, yes. what those kids are expensive. You well, yeah, have more money yeah, but but it's mo for pay. me it was mostly the free time. Yeah. So if you don't have kids, uh, again, or get married, uh, and you know, keep your no dating, wrinkles. The what? No wrinkles. Well, <laughs> well, there's that. The um, uh, you have a lot of free time in your hands, and the internet. I was, I was there when the internet was new, kids, and so I went down rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole, and I finally ran out of conspiracies back in 2014. I literally there was, I got was conspiracy bored. It's like, okay, is there anything I don't have an opinion on? It's like, is Elvis still alive? I doubt it. Bigfoot, yeah, maybe. UFOs, oh, I'm all over that. But there was nothing left on the shelf that, and but except for flat earth. And it's like, oh, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I go, it's terrible. It's stupid. I love this. But yeah. I'm not I'm not getting any younger, so I might as well do it. So I spent again the documentary. I spent the weekend trying to shut down flat earth. It's like, okay, what's this stupid thing about? Yeah, yeah. Which turned into weeks, which turned into months, and then nine months later, uh, I was, you know, I had that Jerry. Okay, do you know the movie Jerry Maguire? Yes, Tom, yes, Tom I Cruise. Do. Mm -hmm. You had me at you had me at hello, or oh, you had yeah. me at whatever like it was, that. whatever like it was, that. yeah, whatever. So Jerry Maguire, the whole concept was he woke up in the middle of the night, had this epiphany that maybe as a sports agent, he should take care of less clients, but give them better, better, better service. Yeah. So anyway, the Jerry Maguire moment was I woke up uh, February of 2015 and said, all right, I'm going about this all wrong. I can't disprove the flat earth model. Okay. So I'm going to make a series of videos and put them out in the internet and say, okay, here's why I think it's flat. And I'll put all my contact information out there because that's absolutely what you want to do on the internet dox yourself immediately that's exactly a, that's a smart move i recommend that for anyone including your home address and your phone oh, number and, mm. and your i did worry about that like right after that happened like your phone number was out i was like Woo. Oh, no, 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 no. And you'd be amazed because trolls are lazy in fact here's my phone right here phone number <laughs> Phone number 303-494-6631. It's not like I'm giving you anything new. You could literally go into Google and type in Mark Sargent's phone number. Oh my gosh. Pop up on screen. 
or Mark Sargent's email or Mark Sargent's <laughs> physical address. It's Charles all there. Lazy. It's I all there. It. They are. They're lazy because <laughs> they don't want to create. Here, here's the thing. If you call me, if you're a troll, you got to use a real number or you have to create a fake number. Nobody's going to go down and buy a burner phone just to punk, you know, try to try to troll me. Same thing with email addresses. And to all fairness, I know you're getting a kick out of this. All fairness. Also, I get away with it because I'm a guy. Let's face it. I mean, if, oh, if well, you're yeah, if yeah. you're I a woman, do like that. I've and if you're a, it, I, it, I don't know if you have, but I have had stalkers. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you especially. If you, in fact, if you're an attractive woman, you should never, ever, ever put your personal information out there, because men tend to fall into that. Oh, what is it? The um, the the three drink minimum rule. Well, that's how I like to call it. Which once they have a few drinks in them, it, it's like a like a bar, right? You know, a guy has a couple drinks at a bar. They absolutely think they have a chance with any woman in that bar. Well, apply that to the internet. Guy has a few drinks at home. They look on the internet. They maybe see a picture of you. They're like, "Oh yeah, I, I could see this. This could totally happen." And if they find your phone number, they're calling you. Doesn't matter what time of night. But women put the the shoe on the other foot. I hardly ever get calls in the middle of the night from from women or men. And I've never been hit on my gay men in my life. I don't know why. Apparently, I'm not on any anybody's gaydar. But that's fine. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'm not hurt. It's fine. It's, you know. I mean, I you're, never, you're I, good enough to be on on. Uh... The gaydar. Whatever reason, no, I do, like, I do not give off that vibe, and I've I've had a lot of gay friends, and I've said I go why you you you've never no you know no, you've never even thrown a, a line out at me, and and they're, and they're like yeah don't see it <laughs> all right that's fine anyway uh, I'm very sorry you're not attractive to gay guys oh no 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 it's no it's not that it's it's no no I I will acknowledge attractiveness no matter where it is but gotcha. okay. You know, you know, I know, I know, I know what a good looking guy looks like, right? That's, you know, I, I know that, but I've got a specific type. So like, um, you know, like when Brad Pitt was young and George Clooney was young and, and, uh, Ryan Gosling and Ryan Reynolds and all those, all the movie stars. And then you've got, you know, other, other people and models like, Oh no, no, I totally get it. It's not for me, but I totally get it <laughs> anyway. So we had so a lot anyway, of attention about that the other day. <laughs> So I, it, back in 2015, I made, I doxed myself and I put all my information out there and I said, okay, I can't prove the, the globe in a court of law anymore. I can't prove, prove the earth. Tell me where I'm wrong. And yeah. I was in Boulder, Colorado when I, when I made it's it. It's like peer review. Yeah. Like you put your science, this is my science. Yep. Let me put this it out I got. For you to <laughs> copy and to, to do it. I, I get that. I'm a science person. And so I was hoping that an academic. I was hoping an academic would call me up and say, and all right, here's, here's where you went off into left field. And then that didn't happen. Right. Nope. Nope. Nobody, nobody called me. Well, what nobody academically called me, but I started getting phone calls, which was weird. I started getting calls from, um, well, media for one and, uh, subject matter experts, people that were not in aerospace, but were in like all branches of the military and engineers and air traffic controllers and pilots and all these guys. And they kept saying the same thing. It's like, yeah, dude, this whole flat earth thing, it's not nuts. And here's why. And they just started piling on and piling on to where six months later, I was, uh, the, I, the, you know, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. That was, it was, it was over. It was like any doubt I had left in my mind. It's like, Holy crap! I, I was onto something. I thought it was just me. I thought I'd I thought I had missed something really really important because again, nine months I hammered on flat Earth, saying trying to disprove it, and I tried to ask every question I could possibly ask, like what about this or how does this work, and so on and so on and so on. And by the time I got to the end, like if you've ever done anything in university where or any it doesn't matter any test you've ever taken, and it's like you're pretty sure you've aced it but you're not quite positive. So you're about to hand in that test and you're like, oh, oh man, I think I nailed it. But you, you think there's, you know, you think maybe you missed it, but you don't know what it was. It never happened. So that's when everything started steamrolling. Uh, you know, the mainstream media started jumping on it. Some celebs got involved. Uh, then um, uh, the documentary thing happened. And then everything just exploded to where... Yeah. Even though the biggest flat earth channels on the internet or on, on YouTube, for example, barely even crack six figures, right? Every major channel has done a flat earth video at, at this point. I mean, the, all, all the big ones, all any, anyone's got a check mark next to them 
And I knew we were in trouble when somebody called. Well, a couple of things happened. One was like when, uh, uh, you know, back in the day, uh, somebody said, oh, yeah, by the way, Shane Dawson just did a, a Flat Earth video. And I go, I go, really? He goes, yeah, it's like he's got like 30 million hits at the time. Uh, and then then PewDiePie did a Flat Earth video. And I I was on the thumbnail. You could go into YouTube right now and type in Flat Earth PewDiePie. PewDiePie talked about me too on one of his videos. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. When I put out the suicide video, like oh, wow. watch this video first before you commit suicide. And he talked about that. So cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh so my God, it, these. it was it That's but cool. when when we were down doing um uh the first conference and the first conference by the way was really impromptu there was a canadian guy uh named robbie davidson who was uh working with a structural engineer out of raleigh north carolina yeah i've been and there it's beautiful there it, it's very nice oh, it's and beautiful. he and that what i did not know was that the structural engineer if you get if you go into a profession where you have to be certified like a doctor or a dentist or an engineer or something where you have to get a certificate on the wall type deal once you get that certificate you are beholden to the institution itself and the code of ethics i had no idea so all of a sudden We've got this conference that's going to happen, and somebody and people really hated Flat Earth. And once they found out the structural engineer was involved, they called the ethics board of structural engineers and said, oh, yeah, by the way, one of your guys is co-hosting a Flat Earth convention this fall. And the legal department called him, and they said, yeah, if you want to stay a structural engineer, you have to distance yourself immediately and permanently. And I mean, he had YouTube videos all over the place and, and his, his name was out there. Um, his name was Brian Mullen uh, and his channel was called Balls Out Physics, where he was, you know, he was big into physics and he was talking about how flat earth was, was technically possible. But anyway, so Brian pulled out, but um, uh, that left Robbie Davidson all in. And so Robbie did the conference. And I remember if you know anything about media um, scout teams, what they do is. So uh, we're doing a flat earth conference, but you don't know if you want to send a film team because you don't know if it's going to happen. You know, if you don't know if it's real, how many people are going to show up. And so what they'll do is they'll send a recon guy. You know, what's like ABC News will send a one person down the night before. It's like to check the place out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I could see all these recon people on the phone that evening going, yeah, you're going to send a team down here immediately. And so by the next day, we lost track of all the camera teams that were that were doing there. I mean, I mean, I was wearing like three simultaneous hot mics. Uh, I did not know, and they were coming in from everywhere: France, Germany, Australia. All yeah. over, it was it was brand new. No one's like, "What do you mean a Friday Earth Man, conference?" You were there for a hot minute. It was Woo. absolutely awesome, and they I the money that was spent to to get all these guys there was absolutely awesome. Howard Stern sent a team. Vice sent a team uh tmz i don't know if they sent a team they will probably for this one that's coming up though TMZ gets in the middle of everything but it was it was a blast absolutely freaking blast but the documentary was hated by uh oh i'm sorry mm, sorry anyway so back up <laughs> so anyway so that that's that's what i did so what i did was i had basically created the 101 book if you know you know university <laughs> book like first year second year third year i created flat earth 101 Okay. which was was it very complex nope no math super easy to understand and so when people were labeling me as like oh the mayor of flat earth or the king of flat earth I, no no not a, not a chance i was what i like to call the freshman recruiter so oh, there when, you go. when you get, you go, they didn't give you a crown did they mm -hmm. no, i didn't want a crown did Nobody not did, a crown. it's not about me it's about the idea i mean i could die in a plane crash tomorrow and don't the, do that I want to like meet you first in like real life person. I before you do that, you said something about Las Vegas. You said there's a Las Vegas. Oh yeah, yeah. So thing. before before the yeah, you were um, telling me to go to or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I might be able to make that work. Before the pandemic, uh, we were doing conferences like like in 2019. So everything just kept getting bigger and bigger. 2015, 16, 17, 18. Uh, the first conference we did was Raleigh. The second one was, uh, the second big year conference was in Denver. That was 2018. Uh, 2019 was Dallas. Now, I walked out of the, the Denver conference. Oh, okay. There's so much to cover. But 
the the 2018 conference i walked out because you know who showed up and tried to punk us logan paul if you know that i've, I've heard of him uh yeah the, the guy uh, with two first names prof professional like, a professional idiot is what he is and he he and his brother jake paul right so they're the paul brothers so they were the ones that did well one they you know back in the day they they started out doing prank videos so after jackass left ended you know with johnny knoxville and those those guys these guys kind of came on the scene and started pranking people they were basically prank videos and they were they were really popular with eighth grade boys and, and crap like that and Logan was the younger brother, I believe, and he was almost banned. Well, he was he was blacklisted from the internet for a while because he was the guy. If you remember this back in the day, he went to the the big Japanese right that guy that he went, went to the, the Japanese suicide forest and was poking bodies, you know, type type deal. You know, making fun. That making was light about the time that PewDiePie said something about my suicide video and stuff. There you go. Yeah, yeah, so I remember that. He yeah. convinced our promoter to let him come. He bought a whole bunch of VIP seats, you know, bought a whole bunch of tickets, but he said, you must keep it an absolute secret. I don't want anyone to know I'm there until I show up. And I'll be darned if, you know, secrets are very hard to keep, but Robbie David said, you know, because of the money involved, he's like, no, 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 I absolutely keep the secret. And he didn't tell anybody except that he was telling people, it's like, that we have a special guest and they're an actor and a singer. And it's like, what? Logan Paul's neither of these things. <laughs> he's just an idiot. And, um, and, but, but you know how rumors go, it's like an actor and a singer. Oh my gosh. Is it Jack Black? Is it Will Smith? Is it, you know, who, who is it? And he was using this to, and the more we speculated, the more tickets he was selling to that conference where he was like, he just let people spin this out of control to where there were people showing up just to see who the special celebrity guest was. Oh so gosh. when I was told the night before, you know, I'm, I'm already there in Denver. When I was told the night before, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, it's Logan Paul. I go, well, it can't be Logan Paul because Logan Paul's an idiot. He's a he's an internet troll. That's all he does. I go, you can't you let know, him. Mark, I don't really understand how you're feeling about these people. Please stop beating around the bush. Just tell us, <laughs> tell, tell us how you really feel. I'm getting some more coffee. You don't want me to sugarcoat it? Woo! All right, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give it to Holy you straight. Crap. Logan Paul get in trouble for all Lo of this. Lo no, no. Logan Paul to... is is a professional troll. That's all he does. He and his brother, uh, of course, now they're into MMA. I, just, I could not know. I just I'm being educated on this. That's all right. They now they do fake boxing where they pay oh. they they pay retired athletes to box them and then the the athletes get most of the gate but they win most of the time except for this last one but whatever. Okay. So oh. anyway, I I was I was I remember having this dinner with everybody at the conference that the night before and I go, "You can't let this guy come on." I go, "He's he's a he's a troll. He's a terrible he's a terrible person." And the reason why it didn't get any traction with them is that his his demographic skews so young that nobody knew who he was. Because most of the people that go <laughs> most of the people that go to our conferences are over the age of thirty. And if you're okay. over the age of thirty back then, um, you you didn't know who Logan Paul was. Okay. So um, I told I told everybody, I go I go if he show if it's actually him, I am leaving. I am not doing my set. I am leaving. Oh. Oh, and yeah. not only did they let him he not only he show oh. up he oh. they actually gave him a microphone and put him on stage right away what? and he, he's like yeah he stumbled through like a couple oh. minutes and he, was, he oh, pretended boy. to be a flat earther he wasn't a flat earther he in fact he flew oh. in a fake girlfriend from australia some model for i don't know what reason why'd you have to fly her in from australia you couldn't get anybody local whatever I, oh, I, yeah. i'm i'm wow i'm like i got on a plane and i left so anyway that was that was 2018 um and then i was vindicated later because he released the video and it was a complete prank you can look up logan paul flat earth on on youtube and you'll see the video that he made it's like an hour long and he completely tried to punk everybody but i so i had to take the bullet it's like you're not gonna punk me kid it's like i've i've done i know what you're up to and it ain't happening uh, everybody else though was like, "Oh, Logan Paul." Anyway, so uh, the next year we went to Dallas, and that was 2019. And 2019 was uh, was our biggest year ever. I mean, I did conferences in eight countries. Uh, I did a, a 
I did a TV commercial down in Australia of all things. It was so weird. Um, uh, did did a couple books. It was you know on Amazon, which was fun. And then, and then, uh, twenty twenty. Plug your books. The what? Oh no no what no. Just you know, I'm not going to plug anything. If you want to look find me, just type in any search engine. Just type in Flat Earth Mark. Go down the rabbit holes. You'll find me eventually. If you want to buy something, great. If not don't care that's not what i'm here for if, if i have to write an autobiography it's well, gonna i be would like, like to help you so well, i would like I, to encourage I know, people I know, to get I know. some of your stuff to, no i don't to, uh, do I, you accept donations as well do you have that for them? i don't ask if somebody, if uh, somebody but wants, i'm i'm not saying you ask i'm just asking if you I'm had it set up. if somebody wants to contact me you can email me again my email address is out there but go down the rabbit holes first if you like my stuff hey great send something send something to me in fact my physical address is on there it's like you want to mail me something for real in real life go ahead go ahead in real life um, i love that but well i mean there's so much digital crap out there that yeah, i don't even know in real life it's it's actually nice i got you know because my birthday is um tomorrow so happy pre-birthday thank you so when people send me cards cards in the mail oh my gosh so you're gonna be 54 <sighs> or was that not public what? Yeah, I know. Oh, how did I mess that up? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah, let me tell you, kids. <laughs> Remember the 80s? I do. I you were born well. in no, I'm 55. 55. So it's 68, born in 68. Oh, my bad. Okay. Born in 68, it's 2003, 55. So, um, and yeah, I love getting older. Super, super fun. Super fun. Um, anyway, so 20, so 2020 starts, uh, I had, I had, I had, I had done so many fun trips. Like I, I done, a, I, I opened the gather festival in Sweden, in Stockholm, had nothing oh to do with flat earth. Gosh. Didn't even, didn't even know. They didn't even, it's like, why are we opening this? This is not a flat earth conference. Why am I opening this? And they say, yeah, the, the promoter's like, we want to shake this thing up a bit. I go, okay. I go, you want me to scare some European kids? Fine with me. And so we did. Uh, and then I, I did a, um, I did a, uh, uh, a conference in London, came Ooh. back the, the people over there, the, the, there was a television, um, uh, Philip and Holly. It was like, uh, not good morning Britain, but the other one that it was like the today show, but for Britain, they said, well, we want you to come back over, talk to Philip and Holly. It's like, Oh God. You know, because I'm coming from Seattle, not an easy thing, you know, going all the way over. So I go back over and I do that. And then I come back and I I had I'd barely gotten home, maybe maybe three days. And somebody from England, this is back 2020. This is where the whole thing just comes crashing down. Mm. And they go, um, they go, hey, you know, like you to come over. Why don't you shoot a McDonald's commercial? You just shoot a McDonald's commercial for Pancake Day in London. I'm just going. That's a thing. They go, yes, Pancake Day is a thing in the UK because it's round and it's flat. It'll be perfect for flat Earth. I was going, wow, super, really, really great. Passports ready, everything's ready to go, and then the borders close. Goodbye, because of the whole pandemic. That was it. And then okay. we make sure you use code words in the. In the oh, no, we can say that. Well, we can say that. I, well, no, we can. Trust me. Wait, you can you can say that. I'm not going to criticize other things. I'm not going to say anything against various oh. organizations oh. or what gets stuck in your arm. Oh, okay. Stuff, yes. 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 Okay. Stuff like that. No, 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 I, I, I've been doing this enough. No, no. My channel was almost decimated because I made. Uh, so anyway, during that time, because I had a lot of free time on my hands, because we couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> because we couldn't, we couldn't do any international conferences. We couldn't even do regional conferences. Like 2020 was supposed to. So it was Dallas in 2019. And then 2020 was supposed to be Vegas. And and we're like, yeah, yeah, Vegas. And they're going, well, st we're still doing them. But the whole conference has to wear masks. And we're like, yeah, <laughs> that's going to happen with our group. And so we said, sorry, we can't do the conference. And yeah. that was yeah. and so. For 2021 20, and 22, we did a regional conference down in uh, Greenberg, South Carolina, North Carolina. Okay. Green, Greenville. We, it was out in Karen B's next to the woods, uh, 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 one of our top uh, women, female flat earth channels. And the reason why she got it was she found a venue that would let us in and nobody cared about anything. It was 
a mason hall it was the shrine it was a shriners oh my god convention hall and you're thinking well wait mm -hmm. you know aren't you if you're a conspiracy person aren't you like against the masons it's like well yeah but you know enemy of our enemy is our friend type thing you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. it's like and so we did and they and everything was really really cool because it's like look yeah fine it's a freaking mason hall but they're not making it they're not following the rules either oh there you go so we're totally, you know, they're they're on board with us. We're on board with them. Enjoy. Everything's fine. And so we did that for three years. So I did that one in 21. I skipped 22 because I was so paranoid about flying. Because when I came back, like, from the, the right. conference in 21, they were heat gunning the temperatures of people at the airport that were flying to Vancouver, which is just up the road from here. Canada. Sorry, Canada. I call Canadian. it mm -hmm. Canadian. Why? <laughs> because remember, Americans live in America. Canadians <laughs> live in Canada. Absolutely. It's so weird because I have called it Canada a lot. You should call it Canada. Absolutely. It should be Canada. They do, <laughs> they, I lived up there for a oh, whole other thing, by the way. I lived in Canada for a year when, yeah. uh, when I came back from Colorado. I did a lot of my 2016. I did the Colorado thing, too. I love it. What? That. I've done the Colorado. Oh, thing. that's right. You're doing the Colorado. Living in Colorado. I, Breck, Breckenridge. When um um prehistory, when I, I I had a choice back in '95 to either manage a Greek a Mediterranean restaurant or go to Colorado and play video games for a living. Well, and, that was a hard choice. It was a hard choice. Actually, it was harder mm. than you might think because I actually enjoyed the whole restaurant world. Me I liked too. that. I, I did I did food service a lot when I was in school. Well, they got and, me on planet they trained me but people would have would have absolutely hit me on the head with things if i would have turned down playing video games for a living especially guys i i and i do not regret we that can't disappoint them. Mm -mm. no well i mean there's people that call when when they found out what i did for a living they're like my husband would kill for your position it's like oh that's good nice to be known i'd be murdered so anyway i i was there in colorado so i went out to colorado and i was there for 20 years and uh, in, wow. Bold, in boulder for 20 years and oh, knew God. nothing about colorado only that people hated boulder because you know boulder, I've been through boulder and i just boulder. i visited but did not go back at the republic of boulder most of his Col california transplants you know with money there's a lot and it's the big university university of colorado you'd think would be in denver it is not it is in <laughs> boulder so anyway so yeah so that was in fact we we did the the the, the last flat earth conference in uh, south carolina at flatoberfest and then Finally, the mandates got rolled back and it's like, fine, where are we going? Well, you know, where we're going, we're going to Vegas where we were supposed to be in the first place. So it's set up and this, Is October, that this year, yep. October, we are going oh to be uh, doing Flattoberfest in Vegas. Okay. I'll have to figure that how, how to get there. Okay. And it is going to be a lot of fun. We, we, this okay. is way October, over what the, what the, what October, well, it'd be the 20. Okay fourth thank you anyway it's, it, it's around there i'll i'll look it up i'll look September, it up october okay. it'd be oh, i'm sorry it'd be the no it'd be the 20 oh. either the 20th or the 27th i can't remember it's either the third week or the fourth week of october but okay. that's where that's where we're going to be and i've been promoting it, it there's going to be a lot of west coast people on this one in fact most of the people from from Oktoberfest will probably be from california There'll be some Seattle people and Oregon people and, and some from Texas and the West. But the thing is, when we were doing it in South Carolina, North Carolina, hardly anybody flew to the conference. They all drove because East Coast, yeah. for whatever reason, people think on the East Coast that everything's within driving distance because there's no it's not like West driving where you have long stretches of road where there's nothing on them. You yeah. know, like you're going through Kansas or North Dakota. When you're in the East Coast, it is freaking just population from new york all the way down to florida it, I mean, it is and i took that route yes it is <laughs> yeah. so anyway so that's what that's how that's where everything you know kind of has has been we we never went away when the uh when everything was locked down we just kept doing our stuff and in fact if anything yeah. we made way more content but we got yeah we got demonetized a bunch uh because Ooh for various reasons 
Yes, various reasons. We will leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it. At I, under, that. I understand. I, that. I, I'm not. I will not. I will mm. not go into any other conspiracies. People, people in in the flat Earth community tend to also have their favorites, their other conspiracies, and I mm. watch channel after channel. It's like, look, man, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but you can't go down that way because YouTube is now cracking mm. down on certain things. I mean, there yeah. were three things. You know, they did a Senate thing and we can say this it's fine I, I won't go any specifics but there's I got in trouble the other day for on 420 i won't tell you what i talked about on the video but i got in trouble on the video so sure there there I, are I when they after we were promoted pretty much non-stop for three years from 2015 to 2018 uh because we were uh we were the binge topic on on youtube we just they couldn't they, they didn't want to slow us down and there was this point where, because I was tracking the numbers, which was if you if you went into, you know, people don't understand that some years ago, five years ago, you could go into YouTube and type in any topic and would pull up a list of top, you know, list of videos, but it will all say search results equals a number. Meaning, you know, how many, you know, like anything, it's, it's search engine 101. You go into Google and type in potato salad recipes, you're going to get, oh, search results equals, um, uh, 1 million, 200,000, you know, different references to potato yeah. salad recipes that used to be in YouTube. And when we, back in 2015, when you typed in flat earth, all the references to flat earth barely came up to 50,000 and that okay. number kept going up and, and I've got a playlist yeah. um, on my channel that actually tracked some of the stuff as it was going up. Cause I was tracking the scoreboard cause I could see this thing going up, you know, a million, 2 million, 5 million, 7 million. And it just kept going up and up. And I was realizing, holy smokes, we're the, the amount of people that are talking about it inside of social media is jumping to the point where uh, we were actually outpacing some some major things, you know, like like game really of more popular than Jesus. We were very popular, extremely popular to where we were closing in in 2018 on Donald Trump, for example, and. And this was, you know, when when he was going to be elected, and yeah, I remember, I, I has better hair though. Well, there, there's that. I was going to do the the. I was trying to do the math. Like, we'll catch him maybe in six months, and we it took us barely even six weeks, and we caught him. And I remember doing. Um, in fact, I could even probably tell you when it was. I did a uh, a Strange World episode called "Flat Earth Catches the President of the United States." And it, and they did not like that. The powers that be did and not. I was about to ask if you got into a little bit of a. Well, it, uh, it was quiet how how they did it. All of a sudden, like maybe not even two months later, somebody emails me and they go, "Yeah, so the scoreboard's gone." And I go, "What do you mean they alter our, <laughs> they alter our numbers?" They go, "No, no, man." Thanks, Mark. So I know I we Thanks ruined for it. having we, the whole policy. We oh, ruined it for everybody. Changed. Thanks search, for that. The he goes, the guy said, no, 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 search results. The line where it says search results equals a number is <laughs> gone. And I go, for, for flat earth, they go, no, for everybody, for everything. No, there was no announcement, it's just gone. And I knew exactly I where it you. I, you know, I grew up in the tech world, and so I I knew the nerd meeting that that came from because I'm sure there were nerds. It's like, okay, should we ratio it a certain way to we're going to like stunt flat earth metrics, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure they were coming up with algorithms. And then some guy, it's always one guy at the end of the table goes, why don't we just take the thing down? Right. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Let's, and you know, the I other nerds are like, what do you mean? Everybody's drunk. Yeah. Let's just, yeah. It's like, what you mean? The whole, the whole search, the whole search line. Yeah, Let's just get rid of the it's whole like, thing. Yeah, how long, it's like, how long yeah. could it take? It's like, well, we could We're do it. An hour. Way too smart for the algorithm. So they tore it down. And so we, we started doing videos saying, you know, how they, you know, remember the old cheer. It's like, we got more, look at the score. We got more, look at the score. Yeah. We couldn't say that anymore. Cause the scoreboard was gone. And so we were, we were tracking, anyway, we were tracking, the only people that were ahead of us were people like, um, uh, you know, like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift and Justin Bieber and, and guys like that. They appear you to know, be I, clones. So, I don't, I don't. Know, if you're like a real person and they have to have like five clones to keep up with you, that's a compliment. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't me per se. I mean, again, it was the concept. It was. I love the fact that that uh, my yeah, my channel was growing and and things were do, were doing fine. But Go subscribe. Was, well, again, if you do great. If you don't, 
We it doesn't matter humble. because that's because why I love to have people. you on here so I can brag about you. All right, I'll okay. Well, I'll, give, I'll give you a great example of what happened. So people were were emailing me back in like 2015, 2016, and they were saying, "Oh wow, really loved your like your two hour thing that you did." I go, "What are you talking about? I've never done a two hour thing in my life." I go, "I make some ten minute videos, never done it." And so what happened was, in fact, I think I still have it here. So if I go on the playlist, and I scroll down to the bottom. There were three three big guys. In fact, here I'll post this for you. Oh, thanks. Here, let's I'll put this in the so there's a playlist. And what was happening was I finally somebody said, Oh, hey, I loved your flat earth movie. I was going, Man, I never made a flat earth movie. What are you watching exactly? And I go, Can you send me a link to this? And they sent me a link to this guy. It was called uh, it was called They're Hiding uh, God with the Greatest Lie Ever. And, uh, and I go, I, what does that got to do with me? Other than I made a clue called they are hiding God. And what had done, what happened was this guy took all the clues, mashed them together, put them all in one video. And what's he up to now? 2.9 million views. And then another guy mm -hmm. says, made one called they hide God with the biggest lie ever. Right. And he, and he got a 1.6 million views. And then uh, another guy made something called Under the Dome Full Documentary. He mashed them all together. And you can see, you know, they're all within three minutes of each other. I don't know if they, anything was chopped. And he's got 4.8 million views. Between the three of those guys who didn't know each other from Adam, you're just like, why would these guys take these video, my stuff yeah. and, and get so many more views? Mm -hmm. the, the big reason was, well, one was fate. Uh, the other one was because I made my stuff Creative Commons license. Meaning anyone could take it and do anything they wanted because I didn't care. I wanted it to be Creative Commons. It's like, look, you're going to prove okay. me wrong. Have fun with it. Go nuts. So I don't know how much money these guys made off of it. Didn't because they got the nickels. It's like I don't. I didn't care because I just wanted to see where it went. But that's all of a sudden, you know, that's how it started spreading because I didn't make a two-hour thing, but this two-hour thing just started going out. I never even compiled it. Yeah. So eventually I had to make a director's cut. It's like, okay, fine. Here's my actual version. Cause I had to prove people that it was me that, that yeah. did it because other people it's like, Oh, did Dr. James make it? Did Peter Pan make it? Did leisure <laughs> make it? No, it was me. So, but, but yes, it was, it was getting huge amounts of traction and it was inspiring some of the other um, channels like, like Jaron, which I loved. I think I told you this last time I was talking to you. Um, Jaron from Globusters and Jaronism channel. He 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 looked at my stuff. He's going, because I don't think it's that great a production. I could make better stuff than that on Flat Earth. So he goes down to the second hand store and spends like six bucks to buy an old copy of Visual Studio 12, takes it home, and he starts up his own channel and he becomes one of the, the biggest channels in Flat Earth, just doing this stuff, just because yeah, like, oh no, 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 I can totally do better stuff than this. And people just started making all sorts of, of fun yeah. stuff. And, and you yeah, know, you're an great awesome article for and... everybody to like kind of form after. I think one of one of the things I saw with you that was um you that I thought was so different from everybody else. And and then I want to make sure we leave all the names out of this and in, in talking about it because it's not about the names or the people or anything, what? but but I was watching you put information out and and you know there's no perfection in any of this but you're putting out stuff that i can test it and see that it's true or in, you know from my perspective yeah. everybody else is putting out like a little bit of a tidbit of the something that would add up with math and then they were putting just ridiculous stuff out there all over the place yeah. so in the middle of all of this circus um, you know, you you were the one that really all the information you put out made sense. Well, thank you, thank you. I a part well, most of that was because of what I did before I got into flat Earth, which was when when I was playing video games for a living, I was also um, uh, teaching. It was doing a lot of tech support stuff. And I transitioned over from a game company to a time and attendance software company, which is time time tracking software. So when you punch in, you know, if you swipe your card at a, you know, working in a factory, you're you're punching in on software, and that software our company made. You know, there's not that many companies in the United States that make that sort of software. 
And it's really broad and it's really complex and it's very, very expensive and it can be very, very frustrating because it's tied to payroll. So if your payroll breaks and you can't cut checks, you're going to be calling somebody like me and you're going to be really upset because, you know, you've got people lined up outside the door, you know, you know, like a, like a, uh, a lawn chair furniture company in Dixon, Illinois, or the Remington ammunition plant in, in, uh, um, Blytheville, Arkansas, or, or and so on and so on. There's all sorts of different plants. And so I, over the course of a number of years, had to be the cool head in the room. And so, which is why I talk the way I do. It's like, so when, when people interview me or they, they come at me, it's like, it's like, there's nothing you can, you can say to me that I haven't heard. I've had, yeah, I've had HR departments cry. Okay, I've had lawyers threaten me, you know, for stuff I didn't even do. You know, it's like, we paid $60,000 for your software. It's not working. Well, you know, we're gonna fly out there and kick your ass. It's like, oh, no, it'll be fine. I would, I would, I would console people. It's like, look, the sun's gonna come up tomorrow. I will stay as long <laughs> as I have to. We'll get your payroll out there. It'll be fine. And you do after, have a very soothing voice. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I wish you my should be one of those AI voices. That, like, <laughs> by the way. By the way, I have to mention, because I, I did a, a thing on that just last week, AI as a term doesn't exist, right? That's it. Uh -huh. It's just software. So is there voice emulation yeah. software? Yeah. yeah. You know, is there, is there, are there filters, Snapchat filters, right? You know, that, that, you know, that fix your face. Yeah. That's just software. Oh, yeah, yeah. A, AI was a term. I don't know when exactly it changed. I don't it's know a propaganda why. thing, right? Well, yeah, it is. It's just a propaganda. It's just something they, they slap on to stuff now. And people think, oh, it's a thinking machine that eventually Elon Musk, God, hate that guy. I, I just have I haven't seen him. I've heard of him and I've heard his name, but I don't, I haven't. He is, him. he is a, he is a South African national who the, our government just uses as a puppet that's all he does and he and because he's a billionaire most of it is absolutely undeserved uh anything he says they just let the me the media just anything he says whatever statement he makes it's it's going to get a, an article written on it and so when he comes out and says oh, oh ai God. is going to be the destruction of mankind it starts spooking all these people it's like look we've been mo making movies since the late 50s e ever since computers have even been a thing Everybody in computers has always said, oh, will one day computers think and start talking to us? It's like, no, no, it's not because we write the software for it. Computers are dumb. What we're talking to right now is just lines and lines and lines and lines of code that we have to write. My robot over there, my vacuum, can, can clean this room and can map it out really, really well. Is that robot going to come over here and start talking to me? Never in a million years. I don't no. know, though. I saw pictures on the internet. Of, like, <laughs> really? You saw something on the internet? Go ahead. Tell me. That was like pictures of a... I don't want to say. And and they were like... They take pictures and it got on the internet. Pictures from the, the vacuum cleaner. Well, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. First off... What? What's off, going on? Every... Okay. Well, let me clarify here. Our, our our electronic devices okay. can can our elect you know are these devices surveillance devices? Yes, of course yes. they are. The, the you know the 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 phone you all should always treat whatever you're doing. I don't care if it's a uh, if you're typing on a search engine or you're typing on your phone or you're doing something in, in front of your your vacuum cleaner. Whatever it is, treat it like it might get on the internet because as far as surveillance goes, like. I don't want to go off in the weeds too much here. The The government built the internet, right? It was not a private thing. The, the internet is a military backbone system that was designed in the event of an apocalypse or dystopia or whatever you want to call it. Just in case something really, really bad happened, they had every, you know, all the, everything was connected so the military could talk to each other. Just an electronic bulletin board system. And then eventually they said, hey, you know what? Maybe we get the civilians on this. And once they did, it's like, do you really think the government wouldn't take a peek into anything that's on the internet? Of course they are. If there's whatever media platform, uh, in fact, what was the, um, there, yeah, okay, real quick, the, uh, before there was, 
uh, the in fact, the government even tried to promote something out there for the civilian market years and years ago called LifeLog. You probably never heard of it because it never went anywhere. And when they finally killed LifeLog, the day, like that, that week that LifeLog was killed, MySpace appeared out of nowhere. And it's like, oh, because yeah, civilians like, well, as long as the government's not endorsing it, we're all for it. It's like, and so like when, Ian, sorry, sidetrack. When Elon says, oh, yeah, I had no idea the government had so much access to Twitter. It's like, of course you did. Everybody knows. It's like if you have build a social media platform, once you reach a certain metric, the government steps in and they say, OK, you're going to sign this waiver. We were never here, but we want backdoor access to anything and everything. We're not going to tell you exactly what we're doing because, you know, honestly, it's probably better that you don't know. But we are the government and we want access because you're running a data streaming service, a data, you know, a data service, and we want access to what's going on for national security reasons. That's it. And that has been the same with everything, major platform. I don't care if it's MySpace or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat, whatever it is, they monitor absolutely everything because look, if I would, then they would. It's what you would do as a government. It's like you're not gonna let something just go autonomously on its own and i know that sounds a little creepy you know it's like oh they shouldn't be watching everything we do it's like look you volunteered you know you sign up it's like look this they've the ones that developed these phones so when people think hey you know i talked about baby monitors for like an hour yesterday and now there's just baby monitor ads all over my phone it's like yeah where'd you think that came from <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> sorry i could i could rant on a whole bunch of stuff but so AI, yeah, do no. not fall off that soapbox. A AI, the AI is just a term. That's that is all it is. It is never. Well, thank you for letting me know. That's how we learn all this stuff. The um, I'm only uh, friends we, with we, highly intelligent we, people. Movies, by the way, even going all the way back to 1968, where uh, uh, 2001, a space odyssey, where the computer rebelled against you know the astronauts, and then Skynet from Terminator. And then war games in 1983 with Whopper and all this, like, you know, we're all of a sudden the, the uh, let me Master explain, I, I, I'll explain really simply why AI <clears throat> or, or, or self-awareness can never, ever happen. Mm -hmm. We can't even in fiction, in any book or any movie, any television, we can't even explain how a computer becomes self-aware, meaning the only three, there's only three things that happen, make it happen in the movie. Either lightning struck the circuit board, uh, radioactive goo fell on the circuit board, or the circuit board was inhabited by some sort of ghost in the machine. Some, some either, either physical entity or alien entity or whatever it was. So it sounds like at the end of the day, from my perspective, look like being a remote viewer, that we're looking at white light. And from my perspective, when I look at white light, it is awareness consciousness and love in its highest form the white sure. light so that would make sense we How that would be the only way that it would become self-aware is if there was more of that white light but what what i'm thing. getting at is we can't even it'd be oh, like sorry. if you tried to define to you to somebody it's the age-old question it's like how can you prove to me you're alive and then try to do that in writing uh, to where a machine would understand I don't know. my hair looks great today I is am that proof that I'm alive. No, no, no. it's not. No, it is not. <laughs> the, the closest we can get, the, the father of computers, I'll give you some more trivia for you really fast. The father of computers was not Steve Jobs or Steve Wozniak or Bill Gates or any of those guys. It was a guy going all the way back to England during World War II. It was a wonderful movie about it um, with Benedict Cumberbatch. Then. What? I don't remember. I was not alive back then. <clears throat> That's right. Um, there was a movie uh, called The Imitation Game. Highly recommend it. It is about. I have watched that because, like, highly intelligent people, I think, watch that movie. Yes. Yeah. It was about <laughs> super, super nerds in England, <laughs> super nerds in England that had, were recruited. It's like, look, you need to crack the German Enigma machine, which was just a glorified typewriter that had a bunch of extra gears and stuff inside it, but no one could crack it. Right. It was completely it was mechanical. Like every day. The what? It would change every day. Yes, and it would change every day. And they had to get ahead of it. You know, they had to they had to figure out a way. And so he built the first computer to do this. But almost right afterwards, I mean, you know, and it was weird because the whole thing was classified. Nobody knew about it for years. Like the Germans like tore apart the machine. And it's like nobody ever, ever talked about this ever. It's like, why? Just in case we get in another war soon? It's like, okay, all right, I, I'll go with you on that. 
So in 1950, um, he he started writing papers on the idea. It's like, what if what if computers can actually start thinking on their own and pretend to be human? And he called it the imitation game, which is weird because the movie was called that, but they never actually went yeah, into it. It did. I didn't make that connection with. Well, the there was no connection. It was I, like it was like. It was, why'd you it call it the like, why'd you call it the imitation game? It's like an yeah. odd wiki reference to what. So now. Since he died, like it's not called joke. it's not called the imitation game anymore. It's called the Turing test, which was talked about in movies like Blade Runner. And it's like a test that you could give questions you could ask a machine to see if they're a machine or not. So, like if you're if you're running into those automated chat support things online, it's like chat with a tech support person. A lot of people don't realize like the first eight or ten lines that you're that you're writing, you know, they're yes. responding to you are a machine. They're just, you know, they're just standard boilerplate uh, plate crap. I will but ask, are you a real person? There you go. Right at, right at the beginning, and they don't answer that. And I'm Te like. Technically, that's part like a, that's like a mini Turing test, which is, are you a real person, right? Oh, okay. So, so yeah. when you hear stuff about AI and chat yeah. GPT and crap like that, sorry, okay. one more thing, which is chat GPT, which people have been talking about. All chat GPT is, is just an article collector. That's all it is. It's no different than Alexa or Siri. When you ask Alexa, you know, Siri something, it's like, hey, <laughs> hey, Siri, you got any good potato salad recipes? I, I, by the way, I hate potato salad, so I'm just bringing it up for the hell of it. And oh, yeah. like, What's this thing with I'm potato not salad? You on your select so, food. So do you have any good potato salad recipes? And Siri will come back and, like, and say, here's what I found, you know, or here's what I found on the web, or here's what I found online. Okay. Right? That GPT is just a version of that. But instead of saying, here's what I found, it will grab pieces from different articles and compile it for you and throw it at you like it's a brand new article. And it's not. It's just plagiarizing stuff from different parts of the Internet. Gotcha. That's all it's doing. And people are like, it's like, oh, we can ask it all these questions. And, and it's like, no, you're asked the, the, the responses you're getting from chat GPT are just responses from articles that people have, that have come up with ideas. It's just searching the whole internet and grabbing. It's not coming up with its own thoughts. It's just grabbing something. So if you, you ask it an opinion on string theory or dark matter, it's going to grab some article from some science journal and, and throw it at you. But if there is no article that, you know, trying to, there, if there's no connection or no, nothing that it can grab, it's just going to give you junk, which a lot of people don't talk about. It's like, no, chat GPT will give you lots of junk all the time because Siri does too. You can ask Siri all sorts of questions that it's like, I don't even know what the hell. Yeah, Siri's really good at finding the, the closest Starbucks to you, but other stuff, not so much. <sighs> anyway. Wow. So, sorry, that was my my little mini rant. I hate, short short version, I hate Elon Musk. There you go. Hate him. Hate him. He's He is done. He's a, he's a foreign national that I wrote an article. There was an article that came out when I was up in Canada where uh, it was bun by the New York Post. Coffee that... for this. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and yeah. it was done. It was done by uh, the New York Post, and it said Elon Musk is a total fraud. And okay. the, well, the reason I, I think yeah. The the reason was is he every time he made a promise, people because people's attention spans are, are so short, no one followed up on it. So he would say, "Oh, hey, I'm going to build a super plane that'll fly from the United States to China in two hours." No, nope, never started. Uh, I'm going to make an underground bullet train from Los Angeles to San Francisco. No, I'm going to save those kids in that cave with my my mini submarine. No, yes, uh, I'm going to I'm going to solve Puerto Rico's it's power problem after the hurricane. The cave. The what? I'm just joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. I mean, everything he said, he just he didn't even start. Yeah. With the, with the exception of SpaceX, which is a whole nother. Oh, I'm sorry, and, and and I have to bring this up because yeah. if you're SpaceX, what space? Oh, yeah, yeah. SpaceX is and is the now the rest of the story. SpaceX <laughs> is ridiculous. Plus, it's government funded. People and it's uh, people questions like, what do you mean I it's know government what funded? That means. I go SpaceX launches from Kent, you know, from American oh. NASA launch sites. It's like they're direct competition to NASA. Why would NASA help them? Well, it's because they're part of the NASA team. It just looks like a private company. Um, oh, and Tesla. Sorry, one more thing, which is I, I have to I have to reiterate to people that, that don't know, because if you're under a certain age, you don't know. Tesla was not founded by Elon Musk. OK, he bought Tesla. 
the Tesla was founded by a completely different group. They built Tesla up and then he bought it from them. And now he's like just kind of trying to erase it. Um, no different than Ray Kroc, you know, who founded McDonald's. It was not Ray Kroc. It was the McDonald's brothers. Ray brought. Kroc okay, now I watched the Netflix version of that. That's what you're talking about, right? The McDonald's. Where he got, like screwed the McDonald's. Oh know? yeah, he screwed him. Not only and he yeah, yeah. And people competitive businessmen are the worst. Not only did he buy them out and franchise it and and make it. Yeah, I will say this: it made him made it monstrous. Was that he put a his McDonald's restaurant right next to theirs so that he could drive them out of business. I was like, no, no, no. I don't want any evidence of the McDonald's brothers ever being around. Uh, same thing with Mark Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks. It's like, no, Mark Cuban did not start the Dallas Mavericks. He just bought them with his tech money. People forget the history. By the way, the McDonald's thing, the, the thing you watch is fascinating because it came down to this one five minute part of the movie, which people don't understand, which was, it was one of his lawyers. It wasn't even Ray Kroc. One of his lawyers, because they were trying to figure out how do you force the franchise owners to standardize exactly to the formula. He goes, all you have to do is make it to where they lease the land. They don't own the land. You just They just rent the property. And if they do anything against what you're trying to do, you pull the property. And he goes, in, and he goes, here's, here's the win. He goes, you own the property. You'll become one of the biggest landowners in the country. And he did. Yep. You know, piece by all piece, McDonald's owns all, and the franchise owners, all they do is run the building on the top. McDonald's owns the land. Mm -hmm. and it's a, you know, McDonald's has huge amounts of real estate money, which they can use as capital anytime they want. That was that was the brilliance of McDonald's. Without that move, McDonald's is, is doesn't even happen the way it happened in history. I, I love those little those little twists. Okay, what else? What what else can I ramble about? <laughs> I love it. Well, the, one of the reasons, you know, you were all like, you know, why did you contact me, Kelly? <laughs> why? What? 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 Oh, it was my contact me for an it was my soothing. It was my soothing voice. And it was. Way, it was your, the, yeah, I just uh, had to hear it. It had been eight years, and I just had to hear a soothing voice. On on a side note, <laughs> no girl that I because I had I had girl acquaintances not necessarily girlfriends when i when i was younger my my voice developed when i was about what 13 and i didn't know why girls kept me on the phone as long as they did well, it didn't did talk for a very long time the other day we did your, your voice is very soothing yes well, thank you thank you i appreciate it but well, you can imagine though using a, a a phone you know the old handset back in the day girls didn't tell me anything right you know they didn't they didn't it didn't occur to me what the hell is like why am i on the phone for two hours with you and it's be they didn't want to you know women are sly that way very clever they're not going to say oh well i like listening to your voice so you can just keep talking it's like oh god i had i known that you're using me for my voice no <laughs> well yeah it was it was kind of like and and then when i we did tech support right my support calls usually were twice as long as anybody else's <laughs> and and because i was dealing with it most of the people in the hr departments were women I was, yeah, I did not, it did not occur to me until later. So when, when all of a sudden I was getting more frequency of women that would ask me to keep talking for, for, like, we, can, we can talk as long as you want. No, no, no. It wasn't that. It was like, they, like they would have me um, read them stories. If you get my meaning. Bedtime stories, late night stories. There you go those those type of stories I've, I've in fact i've got one I'll, I'll i won't play it here but i'll send you an audio if i can find it somewhere around here awesome because i've been wanting i mean you're like the first person on this late night stories idea and it didn't work out because it was still sunlight outside when we started and i don't know what i'm doing i wanted to have some cool music and i wanted to film like you know to get some cool pajamas and stuff and and have like like a cool comforter and some pillows and do like nighttime stories or bedtime stories so people well uh, how how racy are we talking here are we yeah. talking about a harlequin no, or no like a pajama party <laughs> like like where you could like hit each other with pillows and throw a popcorn at each other that sounds like awfully that. innocent well i don't know i'm i'm, I'm, not, I'm just i'm popcorn. just saying no, it's not going to be like one of those bedtime stories. If anything, a little bit spooky. Well, when, but come on, bit nowadays, when people say when people say bedtime people stories, is like, are we talking? Are we talking network? Or are we talking Cinemax? You know, 
You know what Cinemax is, right? Uh, yes. That's right. You haven't maybe. been on TV for 20 years. Well, since 2001. So maybe wow. 2001. That is a long time. I know. I just well, good. No, good for you. That's awesome. But during during the pandemic, I I I think I've officially of like three or four months ago, I've run out of things to watch. People people don't understand that during this whole lockdowny thing, the streaming services were just getting hammered because people are like, "What else is there?" Come to the end of the internet. We have we have, and and I was there back in the day when we were dial up on the internet when you could finish the internet. When it was like there was only so many pages out there, and and people don't know it's like you know it was a joke. It's like you know I you know there was a commercial. It's like well I finished the internet, and people say what are you talking about? It's it's unfinishable. It's like well yeah now it's like, no you Mark could do that yeah, back back mm. then though definitely, have, definitely. Yeah. of course no I had, uh, the CIA and I don't remember there's a bunch of stuff that came out yeah. where they were just talking about the the weather modification stuff was I, I think what it was really about and in that they just talked about the flat non-rotating uh you know earth so then it was like well they've just come out and i've there's there's this really crazy disclosure going on right now that's really fast yeah uh, like not just what everybody else you know was wanting for disclosure but everything's coming out out in all areas so so i thought you know having you on here would be kind of like well we don't even really need to talk about flat earth anymore because it's just kind of a a thing now well uh, that let me out is like now what for for the people let me give you the 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 quick five the five point breakdown of the flat earth thing which is real real fast which was during oh. During the all the time that I wasn't talking to you, uh, there was a, a <laughs> jer well, you know what I mean? No, 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 because you you were too it good for like me. We got in a fight, Mark. People people don't understand that Kelly felt she was too good for me, so she what? wasn't talking. <laughs> to look, look, hey, hey, it's I got, all God's children. I'm not judging. It's a, it's a, it's cool. Oh my gosh, Mark. So anyway, so there was this German television team that was no, I'm kidding. I'm absolutely kidding. Kelly's great. So uh, there was this German television team that contacted me and they said, hey, how would you like to de debate a physicist? It's like, wow, it'd be awesome because most scientists do not want to talk to us at all for various reasons. Mostly because if you're an academic at a certain level, you don't want to be caught talking to a flat earther because it demeans you, you know, because it's, a, it's okay. way what's way below you and your peer group will ostracize you that's the scariest word ever for an academic anyway so they said especially if you're we, getting funding from another source well yeah yeah mm -hmm. I mean, seriously academics when you reach a certain once you reach your phd you do not want to risk it i mean you have spent okay. so much time and so much money uh so they but they realized they said we know that academics are really dry so what we're going to do is we're going to have you ask some questions on video we will pass it to them like a note in school he will record his responses on video and then we'll just go back and forth. So you guys aren't stepping over each other because for whatever reason, yeah. once, once you get past your master's degree in any physical science, articulation just goes out the window. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, why. yeah. I don't, I don't know why. Are you, you have something up on the screen? Oh, I'm just while you're talking. Oh, okay. Um, so, some of the stuff, the pictures I had. Oh, no, it's cool. So um, what happened was, so, and by the way, that, that is very, very true. I remember talking to some producers about why Bill Nye gets on television and they, uh, he, and he said, well, he, he's Bill Nye, you know, if you know anything, you know, he's an actor. That's all he is. He's no, he's not a scientist at all. He's a science educator. He started out as a, in a Seattle comedy troupe up here yeah. in Seattle. I know. Cause I used to watch him on the weekends. I knew exactly who Bill Nye was, but what happened was he did a little skit on uh the show called almost live it was called, it was called bill nye the science guy yeah where he, he can't you know he put on a suit you know he's he's thin he's angular he wears a, a lab coat well mm -hmm. and and what happened was he just lucked out disney was looking for some clean wholesome programming it's like well he doesn't swear he doesn't say anything controversial yeah <sighs> let's let's give him something so they, so they gave him a five-year thing where he was like bill nye the science guy on the disney channel and then it got syndicated which meant oh, it was on yeah. every okay. single day. It was basically their version of a, a lighter version of Sesame Street, right? Uh, 
So what, what am I getting at? Why, and, and what's like, Mike, why are you going on this path? The reason is because I would ask producers, it's like, why do you have freaking Bill Nye on there talking about climate change? Why is he talking yeah. about the Mars rover? Why is he talking about string theory? Why? And, and the producers all said, well, because he looks the part. And I go, yeah, but he is no, it doesn't matter. He go, it's he looks the part, and and I got it because I have seen other guys. You know, if you try to bring an actual academic onto a show, they're so dry. You know, the producers are screaming. I mean, is, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll answer like, "Yes, that is correct," yeah. right? And and the producers are like, "Get him talking, get him talking," right? And Bill Nye, no, no, he's he can he can punch out the information even if he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Um, same thing with, with Neil Tyson, but Neil Tyson does have his PhD. So anyway, this physicist from Georgetown University out on the East Coast, I was supposed to do these. They said, come up with five quick science questions. This is the flattered side of things for you. Yeah, yeah. You have five science questions that science-y questions that this guy from Georgetown should be able to answer. It's like, all right, fine. Uh, flat Earth. Um, the first thing would be... In fact, what were my five questions? Boy, it's been a while. Um, one sec. I'm trying to think of what order. Oh, they oh were no, in. take your time. Take uh, your what time. order they were in. Uh, first would be long distance photography, right? Which is tell me why ships don't go over the horizon anymore with HD technology. Meaning uh, we, we, we wouldn't even be talking about this 20 years ago. 20 yeah, years yeah. ago, a ship would go off in the distance like, well, it's gone. And you could have the most expensive camera on your shoulder and zoom in and still look like it was gone. But now yeah, yeah. You, can, you can get an off the rack $500 P900, <laughs> P950. You could zoom in and there's the boat. Even though it's gone, you can now bring it back into frame and let it go again, zoom in again. And the only limit to what you can see off in the distance is uh, the thickness of the atmosphere. Because, you know, remember what we're breathing uh, in here is only like 99% transparent. It's it, There's a thickness. It, it gets at, uh, over time, like looking at the end of a you're going out in a swimming pool. It's crystal clear. But if you try to look at the other end of the swimming pool, you can't see it because it, there's there's too much density in between you and there. Oh, that's uh -huh. number one. Most people that get into flat earth, it's about long distance photography. You can see things that are way, way yes. further away than you should be able to. Cause you remember the curvature is eight inches per mile per mile or eight inches per yes. mile squared, uh -huh. which means that at 10 miles, it's only 10 times 10, which is a hundred times eight, which is 800 inches. But when you get at like 50 miles away, it's like 1600, 1700 feet, meaning Eventually, it's something, whatever it is, yeah. has gone over the other side of the hill, and you can't see on the other side of a mountain, so why can you see on the other side of the curve? And uh -huh. that, that's what most people get into. You that's got me with the math. Uh, I mean, when I first started looking into it, yeah. I'd already remote viewed like a couple years before that and saw... Uh, something that I was just showing that this thing that we're on looks sh like it's shaped kind of like this, right. like a cone and and all. So so you know I I had seen that, and um, you presented the math, and I went out there and I you know I did all the the math, yeah. And it's like holy crap, it is flat ish, yeah. flat ish. When I say flat ish, like if you take a dinner plate and turn yeah. it upside down, yeah, not a ball no no definitely not a no, sphere and a sphere. and we don't use the the term so it's very much like uh, hopefully you can see it here if the green screen doesn't screw it up very much like that mm -hmm. so um uh so we don't say uh round for example because a dinner plate is round um okay. uh, we That's say ball ball or globe or sphere this technically is round but it's also flat you know, like a dinner plate or a hubcap or, or whatever it is. And basically, Antarct Antarctica is on the complete outer edge. That's the only thing that doesn't look like normal. Magnetic north is in the center. There is no magnetic south, which is true. If you go down to Antarctica, you can look up yeah, all yeah. sorts of stuff. The compass does not work in Antarctica. Uh, but again, because very, very few people are out down there, it's forbidden except for military and military. Yeah, I, I haven't right? checked that one out myself. There's a wonderful thing you can look up the online, the Antarctic Treaty. It's a PDF you can download anywhere. Uh, the Antarctic Treaty, which was put in place in 1959, which says that no corporation can set up shop in Antarctica ever. 
It's like, what? <laughs> For many company, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It's like, what are you talking about? There's there's oil and gas companies that start fracking like down the street tomorrow if they wanted to. Yeah, yeah I know about Those that. Those companies, not only are they not allowed to go down to Antarctica, they're not even allowed to talk about it. Not even, not even allowed to challenge it, and it's not even up for review until 2041. And you're saying, well, 2041 is not that far away. It's like, well, it was in 1959. It was 80 years in 1959. It's like, really? What? It's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties. Anyway, mm -hmm. the, the second point. So the first point was long distance photography. The second point I gave to the Georgetown guy was uh, gravity versus the vacuum of space, meaning. Uh, a quick little thing for you. Uh, if you ever know what happens in a vacuum, you can look it up all day long. You know, people make little vacuum chambers all day long. It's pressure. Yeah, I did it in high school with a marshmallow. There you go. Where they, they did it in like a tube. So when they created the vacuum, the marshmallow was like, like really big. Yep. So um, when yeah. I would watch a movie that was like outer space, yeah. And somebody went into outer space either without their suit on or their suit was broken or something. What I saw would happen was they would implode in some way. And like there was pressure pushing. And then I'm like, but they, I was taught that was a vacuum. That doesn't make sense how they died in space. Right. Through squishing. Most, that currently. <laughs> most, most movies and television shows have it wrong for dramatic effect deliberately. Um, the, the, one of my favorite quotes of all time is from Mark Twain, who said, never let the truth get in the way of a good story, which is whatever, you know, sometimes the truth just isn't glamorous enough for, for, for film. True so story. you gotta, so like the yeah. end of aliens from 1986, yeah. where, where Sigourney's climbing up that ladder and she has space behind her. It's like, no, 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 no. Anybody that's dealt with deep sea pressure situations, submarine guys and oil rig guys, mm -hmm. it's like, no, it's absolutely instantaneous and violent um it is uh if you have a hole in the side of your spaceship assuming that right you know like even the size of a like a like a quarter if it yeah. punches in it is not like it is not uh oh hey we only got two minutes of air left let's get the duct tape it, no oh, no, like, no no you're dead <laughs> you're yeah dead. yeah it, yeah you're dead it's absolutely perfect. instantly the air and what i mean is yeah. you, for simple definitions for people vacuum is means nothing so what we're breathing in here is 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen, but it's, it's this invisible fog that you can't see. The, the, where it, the part of the design of this world, which is so clever, is that a vacuum for us looks identical. You can't tell a room that's uh, that got a vacuum in it versus a room that's absolutely full of air. So mm. it, it confuses people because you don't know. I mean, so you can fake something if you're an astronaut very, very easily. Because you could say, oh, that astronaut's in a vacuum chamber. It's like, oh, really? Uh, that's cool. You don't know. It's like you have to take their, you have to take their freaking yeah, yeah. word for it. Anyway, mm -hmm. so the point was is that if there was a vacuum chamber above you, right, and you had a little valve, you know, you know, the vacuum chamber above, let's say it was a tank vacuum chamber above you, and you had a, um, a handle, and you popped that thing, right, it would be instantaneous right it would be horrible right you'd probably black out if you weren't sucked yeah, up the freaking ceiling, i'm not gonna do that right they'd be terrible yeah, the yeah. point is it's like what it's just saying okay mark what's the point my point is if you go outside right now right outside of that thing yeah, yeah. why if if the vacuum of space is sitting next to our atmosphere why are we still breathing exactly Exactly. Why, why hasn't our atmosphere just been <laughs> torn off into space? And and your first response, and the only response, which is the knee jerk response that every scientist person gets, is oh. gravity. Well, it's got to be gravity. Gravity's holding the air down. I go, really? You mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room from going upstairs just now? That same gravity? And people, that's when the gears start grinding. But it's like, oh, uh, maybe there's more gravity outside. It's like, no. That is not how it works. Um, that was point number two. Point number three is simple. Uh, it's the eclipse shadow, which if you know anything about the eclipses, have you ever been in an eclipse? So the I've moon photographed and I've taught people how to photograph it from their cell phones to actually see what's going on. Oh, cool. All right. Mm -hmm. um, if the moon, mainstream says the moon is 2,000 miles wide and the earth is 8,000 miles wide. But if the moon is 2,000 miles wide, then why is the eclipse shadow only 70 miles wide when it goes by? And people say, well, it's like a magnifying lens only with a shadow. And it's like, really? Because that never happens in real life ever. When you walk by a building, your shadow is either life-size or larger. It is never smaller. 
Meaning you don't walk by a building and your shadow goes down to the size of an action figure. It never, ever, ever happens. And coincidentally, 70 miles is roughly the size that we say the sun and the moon is anyway. Uh huh. So why is the blackout zone, you know, that, that, that sort of size? Uh, number four out of five is the eclipse uh, temperature which I, I actually thought was a myth. Somebody called me up like a year ago. Yeah. Flat Earth, see if I got my gun lying around. Um, yeah, yeah. I d I've done those experiments, The like the moonshine. Yeah, the moonshine. Uh, and and the, you can, there's wonderful and, videos on it. Yeah, the moonshine. A, a, a $20, $20 you know, temperature gun. Yeah, yeah, I've got one. And, and you point it, and, you yeah, point yeah. it at the moon shadow. So people know and people are listening and like, what the hell oh is he talking gosh, about? I'm glad you did this. I, I so, have videos on this. This is awesome. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got some wonderful vids on that under the experiments section. So um, uh, if it's 80 degrees in the sunlight, it's 70 degrees in, in the, the shade, right? And we all know that the sun or the whatever object is blocks sun, some of the sun's rays. It's always cooler in the shade. However, in the moonlight, it's the opposite. And it shouldn't be. Meaning if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, I'm talking Fahrenheit here, 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moon shade. In fact, we've seen yeah. up to 13 degrees swing. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, what are you talking about? It's like, no, that's that's. it shouldn't be like that. Meaning if the moon is reflecting some of the sun's light, it shouldn't go negative. In fact, it even gets worse because you can take a magnifying glass to moonlight and it gets even colder. It's the opposite of sunlight. You need a magnifying mm -hmm. glass of sunlight, you can burn things. But if you take a magnifying glass to, to moonlight, it actually gets colder. And we can do this test all day long. And people are saying, well, what does it mean? Does that doesn't mean it's a flat earth. I go, no, but it completely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. Meaning uh, the sun and the moon are, um, uh, uh, you know, there, there should be a relationship between the two and there's not. And mm -hmm. in fact, there was a wonderful video I put on my channel. I can't remember who did it, where uh, some of the guy took uh, predator vision is now a thing, you know, from the movie Predator. From back oh, in the day. OK, cool. Thermal thing. And he was and he's not a flat earther. And he was walking around his neighbor. It was like, goes, let me see about this flat earth stuff. And he was showing the neighborhood in, in predator vision on a on a moonlit night. And everything was lining up with what we were saying, which was it was uh. always warmer in the um, oh, that some of those shots are from the you had for from the. Uh, the movie Iron Sky. Yes, yes, yes. On the which moon. Did, we were talking about the moon. So I was <laughs> which, putting up some moon things. Iron Sky was some of the finest trailers ever. And it scared American producers so much that it did not get theatrical release here because, well, <laughs> Nazis living on the moon since World War II and they're coming back to get us. Yeah, it's not going to play very well, well. I've remote viewed that. but And that's the reason I put those pictures up is what oh, okay. I remote viewed like 10 years ago. Yeah, you, you know, like the moon and stuff. It they they had it like what is that about 1950s or so? That is what it looked like up there when oh, I remote viewed to like 10 years ago, and then I saw this movie and it's like, oh shit! Did you ever see the second one? I think Iron I Sky, remember. Iron Sky Two. It I was set. I got bored with. It the was set one. in Antarctica, and I'm almost guaranteed that it was. Um, uh, that it was because of what we were doing is the inspiration there. Anyway, fifth and final point for the Georgetown physicist was the um, fourth point was the moon temperature. Fifth yes, point yes. Was, was the Van Allen belts, which is uh, back before there was was a space program. Van Allen, who worked for NASA, <laughs> early days of NASA, uh, he said that there are deadly radiation belts like 60,000 miles thick yeah. that sur surround the world. And nobody should ever, ever up, go up there and get through them. And then Kennedy screws the whole thing up in 1960 and says, you know, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, blah, blah, blah. And then they go back to Van Allen and they said, how are we going to get through it? He's going, well, we're, we're going to go real, real fast. It's like, okay, because you said they were 60,000 miles thick and the best speed we can ever do is like 17,000 miles an hour. Maybe. Yeah. And that's, and, and then of course this is round trip. So the Van Allen question is, are the Van Allen belts deadly? Yes or no? It's a trap. By the way, it's a trap question. It's a you trap. Can't it's a trap. And if you say they're um, deadly, then how the Americans make multiple round trips in the 60s without any shielding whatsoever? Because remember, the only things that can stop radiation yep. are lead, gold, which is twice as dense as lead. People don't know that. And then a whole bunch of water, which they use in, in power plants which you would never put on the top of a rocket. It'd be like putting anchors on top of a rocket. It's a terrible idea. So these guys used plastic and aluminum and went through the Van Allen belts multiple times. None of the astronauts died. 
Well, duh. What? Of course, duh. Yeah, nope, nobody got radiation poisoning. And I oh, think nobody got cancer. Yeah. And there's still like four of these guys still limping around today. <laughs> and then if you go back and say, well, okay, well, they're not dangerous. Then I go, okay, so go over to the NASA website and look up something called Orion Trial by Fire which was this little film that they put together back in 2014 where they said, yeah, so we're not going to put manned people on capsules because we haven't solved the, the radiation problem yet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, what are you talking about? You solved it perfectly in the 1960s. It was flawless. What, what, what changed since then? And I, I don't even get me started. Anyway, those five questions I threw at the physicist and that was it. He folded immediately like a card table and said that's it we're not we're not doing this and the germans went home angry and and the segment never ran but oh, i still got the emails from this from these guys and it's absolutely yeah. happened i wasn't going to make up that out of out of no nowhere so when people talk about like artemis the you know the new moon program moon 2.0 that people are trying you know that the rocket just blew up was it yesterday or the day before i, I, I haven't remember. seen any of the oh that's elon that musk's baby he wants, that they he, faked the last he, 20 years so he, Oh, no. Elon said in 2017 that he was going to send tourists around the moon in 2018. And I remember just sitting in Canada going, wait, what? That's like not what even eight, that's not even 18 months from now. You don't have a rocket. You don't have a crew. You don't have a capsule. How are you going to do this in 18 months? Of course, nothing happened, right? And then this Japanese billionaire came on. And it's like, oh no, I want to have like a dozen people. I want artists and photographers. And I want to send all these people like a like a like a school bus. I want them to, to go around the moon. It's like, oh, okay, that's gonna work. So they've been stalling and stalling. The first Artemis rocket, which was launched last year, I believe, uh, went around the moon and got within something like 50 miles of it, and the pictures were horrible i mean they're the most low res things ever it's like look we have people taking better shots from here so when you were point blank range away why why were you not showing any decent moon shots not only that they flew to the moon and back hours and hours and hours and hours of footage no stars ever and and people say well it's an exposure setting it's like well back in the 60s you could use that excuse everything's digital now Exposure settings, this isn't about film. This is about just tweaking things. You should be able to see stars anytime you want. They didn't even bother to show them. So no, the Artemis is absolutely a joke. And uh, Artemis 2 blew up. I think it made it two minutes after launch and it just started tumbling. And then at four minutes, it just detonated. So no, no, it's it's absolutely so, a joke. This is the, the sun um, when it had six sides one day. And right. it's a picture and people are like, oh, it's the aperture. So I, you know, called the cell phone company and they said there was no aperture hmm. on my cell phone. So that's really that's cool. six sides on, on, uh, well, you know, the artificial suns. Sure. The, um, and by the way, that would be the weakest part. If anyone has questions along those lines, uh, which probably, do you have people that you could, that do you have people asking questions or not? <sighs> Let's see. You should okay. probably. You guys probably, have questions. If you got questions, please. You got questions, throw them at me. Is uh, the Earth? Uh, let's see. Now your science. If you die, you know what's going on, mother. Aw. <laughs> what? Um. So yeah. Any any questions you guys guys have? Yeah, uh, questions. You know, Let all, me all. know. Because I've seen a lot of stuff. I I didn't get all the uh pictures and screenshots done. But there was uh you want me to kind of... I could send you a whole slideshow of um oh yeah yeah that would be so cool all right I, I've got it in a zip file I'll send you the, the right. I'll send you the slideshow that I, I use from my um I was trying to remember if it was Instagram or what but it was showing something from a long time ago where it looks like the, the earth only a curve around the edge and what what it showed uh more than anything was uh, hold on what it looked like was this, uh, this concept. Like, if oh, you go, yeah, that's if what, you go that's up, what... yeah, if you go up far enough and, and you look down, you're going to see these curves. And if you kind of like black out the rest of it, um, well, that's a, it that's, like a top, that's a top down look. That, that particular map is a top down look. And I don't know who created it, but it's kind of cool. It's a top down view of this. So this would be just one of those circles. Yeah, yeah, like right. one of those. Uh -huh. In fact, ours would be, I don't know, it's not dead center, but it'd be like one of those two in the center that are kind of next to each other. 
if you zoom yeah, in. Yeah, I can't remember one. which one was like the known world. I think that's calling what we are. The yeah. Known world, the and world. that, that by the way, is one of the most common questions, which is, you know, are we a one-off? It's like, why would we ever be a one-off? You're going to have one of these. You're going to have a whole bunch of these somewhere in yeah. different in different states of uh, progress. So, but the key is, is that usually, again, if you don't want cross-contamination, kind of like Petri dishes, you don't want people from here. The, the old argument is that I came up with some time ago, which is, are we a box of kittens that should be protected from things that are outside? Or are we a box of scorpions that never, ever should be let out ever because of what we could do? And come on, we were we were talking about that about ourselves in sci-fi movies going all the way back to the, to the 50s. There was a wonderful 50s movie called The Day the Earth Stood Still, where the uh, some of the other older civilizations showed up and said, yeah, so we've taken a look at what you guys have been doing over the last couple thousand years. Yeah, you don't get to explore completely un, un, um, unchaperoned. There's no way. You guys, you guys would wreck everything. <laughs> And they're yeah. come on, they're they're not wrong, you know. We we've done. I I wouldn't trust our you know some of our groups. Like oh yeah, just let them go, let them go. It'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. Oh sorry. Here, let, well, uh, here's here's a question for you um, that people often ask, which is why hide it? Why why keep it a secret? Right? Let's say let's say you figure this out. And by the way, we had nothing to do with the building in this place. Right? So let's say you figure this thing out in 1960, roughly. Because okay. up until that point, people don't don't know. I mean, we're living in a life now of, of technological luxury. But beforehand, we didn't have a lot. You know, we we didn't we haven't barely even had airplanes for a hundred years. Barely had well, airplanes. And, and and then this kind of stuff that we talk about, yeah. I always question because this is I guess this is my perspective. Yeah. Uh being born in 1969. Yeah. You know, 53 years, I've only had exposure to certain things. And then I've got people who lived in, in my life, like were born at a certain time. And they're like, well, when I was growing up, it was this way and it was that way. And I've got information from them. Uh, I look at anything before, you know, who's the, the oldest person? You know, and, and let's pretend that they're like 120 years old. Sure. Well, let's say I get to talk to them. I'm like, hey, tell me what it was like 120 years ago. They may or may right. not remember. Uh, but at that point, if I can get information from them, then if I can get information from 120 years ago, are they lying to me? Are right. they telling the truth? Right. And here's right. another layer of, of it on there. I'm kind of looking at my reality as what was I taught in school or the education of this, this false foundation of telling me something happened 150 years ago when I can't confirm that. So I just start to look at all information differently. Sure. That, yeah. that instead of trying to base what's going on now and this new information on potentially false information, I like to just kind of start from scratch. Sure. Just just because I've I've got this when I look around, I see so many backdrop people that I just wonder, even if it true true or not, this thing that I'm all upset about, is that completely a backdrop situation to where those aren't even real people? Is it's just like the uh the matrix creating something and it's this computer program. Sure. And and I can't confirm any of this. And so I, I don't know. Do you ever get crazy thoughts like that? Oh, what are you all the time? <laughs> um, going going back to um, it, I, I've said this on a few things, which is you I, even though I start with the, the whole flat earth concept, <clears throat> I really am drawn to the virtual aspect of it because of the the technology I was involved with over the years. Entertainment has always tried to work. We've always been striving to create a virtual reality. And the things we are running into now mimic experiments that have been done years ago. I'll give you a quick example. Okay. Um, and forget about The Matrix. I mean, The Matrix was fine as a concept, but good Lord, that movie's 24 years old now. Whew, long time. I wasn't talking about the movie. I was talking about like the just like the Matrix system. Oh no, no, no. But even yeah. previous to the Matrix, there was a movie. Oh. If you if you ever get a chance, look up a movie called The 13th Floor, 
which was based on a 1970s German movie called World in a Wire, which was based on a 60s book called Simulacron 3. But the, the, the 90s movie, uh, 13th Floor, was a concept which has been around for a long time. It was a concept going all the way back to the 60s, which was once you start creating a simulation, right? When you can create a simulation that's good enough to fool you, then you have to ask yourself, what's the difference between that one and this one? Yes. And are we actually, you know, then all of a sudden things get blurred because wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I, you know, did I just leave a simulation or am I still in a simulation? Um, and I'll give you yes. some, great, some great examples of it. Or is it there's, just layer upon layer of simulations? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, there's eventually, there, well, I shouldn't say, I don't like the term base reality, but you don't have to necessarily have simulations within too many simulations because each one cancels the others out. I don't think we will ever be allowed to, well, there's health reasons. One, um, we'll, we won't be allowed to create our own simulation because once we do, like ones we can dive into, because once we do, this world becomes irrelevant, meaning it destroys, it It will cancel out all meaning of the world we're it's in right the now. the nothing. Yeah, there was Never a wonderful, story, the nothing. There was a wonderful, and I hate using his name because now he just gets so much crap. Uh, Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert, before he got all woke and weird and and, and stuff, he, um, he wrote a foreword for a, a graphic novel years ago when he was talking about, this was back in the 80s, way before we had simulation movies. And he was talking yeah. about the uh, Star Trek Next Generation, something in, in the series called The Holodeck. Yes, which yes. That's and, what I compare this to. And The Holodeck, it was, he goes, The Holodeck will be the last invention we ever create, and then civilization collapses. Because once that you create sense. it, no one will want to do anything else but the holodeck. And that was kind of the running joke inside Star Trek, which was there was never lines to go into the holodeck. And it was people were like, it was always vacant. You could always go. It's like, oh, yeah, no, no, holodeck's not being used. It's like, why the hell wouldn't it be used? You're in deep space, man. <laughs> you, you, It creates anything you want, any fantasy you want. And, of course, everything was so squeaky clean in Star Trek. It's like, oh, no, it'd be completely deviant and weird but you wouldn't want to do that because everything's recorded so i don't know what the hell anyway it doesn't really matter <laughs> the point was is that once <laughs> once the holodeck was created here once we created virtual reality people would earn just enough money to support the what it would cost the virtual reality jump, habit jump into the holodeck no one would do any would, would do anything else so Anyway, the, really why, why, out if that's true or not? Let's why do it. I think that we're in some sort of simulation now? The there are two things that just scream. In fact, one's even uh, next level stuff, which I'll tell you. But the first one is something an old old experiment called the double slit experiment, which was when they fired used they used to use ping pong balls, fired them through quantum two, physics. Uh -huh. Yes, there you go, quantum physics, yeah, which yeah. Is, sometimes is a wave and sometimes is a particle. Mm -hmm. but what they were really saying was the short version of that the potential field. Yes, the short version of that is you that reality isn't there, isn't fully being rendered unless somebody is watching it. So if yeah. if your whatever's and again, this hap this was happening. This was what we do in in game in simulations that we're making now. Be, be it a video game, let's use a common video game, be it Fortnite or GTA or minecraft or whatever it is it's called flashlight graphics meaning whatever you're looking at we're going to render right perfectly yes. because you're yeah. looking at it whatever's yeah. behind you it's we're going to turn stored. into almost nothing because you're not looking at it yeah Why it's like stored in the software program right yes but, but until only you turn around and look at it then we draw it Yes, they, and, and the reason you do that is to save to save resources. I think or, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Or or the big version, which is okay. You see the mountain off in the distance in the game. Do you draw the trees on the other side of the mountain? If your character is never going to go there, no, you don't. In fact, that mountain miles will be made out of paper mache. It miles will be the old western movie yeah. sets. The front <laughs> the front of the the building was there, but when you open the door, there's nothing there. Right? It's just freaking plywood. Okay. So if that's what we do in our video games, why is it happening to us here? Meaning the double slit experiment says when you're not looking at something, whatever, when you're looking at me right now, I'm being rendered. What's behind you isn't being rendered. 
That's what the double slit experiment says, which is exactly what we are doing when we create our own simulations. It's the old argument that we heard when we were kids, which was if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody to hear it, does it still make a sound? And kids, when you were growing up, it's like, I don't know. What does that mean? It's a deep thought thing. Now we absolutely know. It's like, no, there's no freaking tree there because you're not there. In fact, it doesn't make a sound because it never fell. In fact, we're not even going to show it falling until you show up. So that's that's the first part, right? No, yeah, she'll yeah, be. It's just an idea. It's a potential in the potential field or the software program. Yeah. By the way, the the comment there that showed up, Shell Beach, wonderful movie. Uh, yeah. From <laughs> from um from a movie called uh, Dark City, done done years ago in the in the nineties. As a matter of fact, Shell Beach it w was a beach that no one could get to because it didn't exist. It was a rumor. People only thought they knew it. It's like, oh yeah, I've been to Shell Beach. Really, how do you get there? Nobody in the city could remember it because the the advanced civilization toyed with people's memories and they made them think they knew where Shell Beach was, but they couldn't get there. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I reference Dark City a lot uh, as far as the concept of what's going on right now. Dark, Not Dark necessarily the de all the details, but Dark the concept. City fascinating um a side note and i'll try to get to that question i, I will I, i'll try oh no no worries which was um the dark city thing goes into the whole memory thing but i, I do want to mention this so so double slit experiment is imitating what we're, what we're doing now dark city goes into memory which is electrochemically there is no difference that we can tell between an actual memory a, you know a live event and a memory and this goes into two two quick things. Uh, there was a free throw experiment that was done years ago, where you had three groups of kids. One would practice free throws for ten for ten minutes a day. One would just sit there and do nothing, and the third group would think about shooting free throws. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the ones that shot the free you know the practice free throws they absolutely did better. And the, the controlled group they didn't change, but the people that thought about shooting free throws mm -hmm. they actually got better just yeah. for thinking yes. about. It. And that goes along with PTSD. Oh my gosh, I teach this too, Mark. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This goes along with PTSD, which is like Vietnam vets be like, you know, you joked about, oh, they'd hear helicopters, right? Well, electrochemically, the, the memory of hearing a helicopter is no different. So if it was burned yeah. in their head, they were hearing helicopters. So because electrochemically, yeah. it was the same thing. And that when the Matrix talked about that is, which is That's like- That's how I teach remote viewing. There you go. Yes. Oh, so oh my gosh, thing, you got it. You understand this. I should hope so. So the the thing the thing that I want to mention though that this is that gets even weirder is there's a there's a wonderful wiki entry. Look it up. It's called um, Neuroscience and Free Will. Fascinating, fascinating. Which is again, science came up with this, not us. Oh, you know what? Before we do neuro neuroscience and free will, um, there was something called the hundredth monkey effect, which I loved. You know, you ever heard about that one? Yes, I think I told you about that one. Which was, but I'll tell it to your to your listeners. Which is, yes. you um, you you throw some potatoes to monkeys on this island, and they get sand on them, and you show them that hey, by the way, if you wash it off in the water in the ocean, they taste better because nobody likes eating sand, right? And more and more monkeys started learning this, and then when it got to about the hundredth monkey, all the monkeys, the rest of them, simultaneously learned it, like it was a, an update to all monkeys of that species, and not mm -hmm. just is on that island but the monkeys that were on islands that you couldn't even swim to they were off in the distance uh -huh. they all knew instinctively now you wash uh -huh. off the potatoes with the water so there's no sand on them there's your that's, that's software yeah. update 101 which is <laughs> yep. like update all monkeys and species to be is something beneficial the the update works or hell the um i just picked up this one the other week which was uh coral coral when they spawn right Every species of coral spawn. Yes, I saw that recently. Yeah, yeah. They, they spawn at the exact same time, which is, and you're thinking, well, so what? It's like, no, no, no. If you cut a piece of that coral off and take it to your home a thousand miles away, and you, Still does it, it. you call, you call yeah. a buddy up, it's like, hey, did your coral spawn just now at this particular yeah. hour? Like, yeah, at four o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, yep. yep. <laughs> yep, it did. And so, and that's that's software. I hate to say it, but it is. And people say, oh, you make it too easy. It's like, why not? So in, in the beginning, there was the word, right? And the word is code, in my opinion. So anyway. And vibration. There you go. Vibration, emotion. And sure. the emotion activates that potential field, which contains all of the programming for the whole video game. And then that whatever is created is based upon the emotion. 
Sure. I'll uh, go with that. Yeah. You know. Neuroscience and free will. So some years ago, let's say 20 years ago, they yeah. hooked up. The scientists love hooking up, you know, sticking electro stickies to people's heads and then putting them on a computer and measuring stuff, right? What end of the movies? Oh, I'm just randomly putting stuff up as you're talking. So oh, just movies stuff. on the subject in a sci-fi movie. Oh, I recommend all sorts of sci-fi movies, but I'll I'll try to get to it. Um, the oh, eclipse sizes. The, by the way, the eclipse sizes question doesn't matter. In fact, look up. There's a wonderful playlist. Okay. Uh, if you're curious about the the sun and the moon and eclipses, just email me. Uh, my email address is is on in the description box of every single video I make. I will send you. Uh, I had eclipse questions today. I will send you either eclipse questions or, or links, or I'll send you some oh, sun links. Nice. Um, but when it comes to the uh, the neuroscience for free will, okay, so you hook electrodes up to a person thing, and you put a computer screen in front of them, and you say, okay, you're going to hit this, you're going to hit uh, keys one through nine. You're going to pick a number randomly, one through nine. You're going to note the counter, and also note if you made any hesitancy between the time you thought about the number and when you hit the key. So if I say pick a number between one and nine right now, and you'd be like four, right? And maybe there's a fraction of a second. I did, I did three. Let's Was say I not three. supposed to tell you? That's fine. Nothing. Three. You hit three, right? Here's where it gets weird. The computer even though it couldn't tell you, we're not subtle enough to tell you what number you chose, could tell you made the decision to hit that number eight seconds ago. Eight seconds before you even heard the question. Which means, or, or even before you even, even conscious, there's nothing faster than conscious thought, right? You thought three, it popped into your head. The computer could already tell you were winding up to choose that before it even registered in your head. And you're saying, okay, what does that mean? Well, what it means, is, which is why it's tied to free will, which means really talking about predestination, meaning maybe you're not in a virtual reality, but maybe you're in something much, much simpler that appears to be a virtual reality. And I'll give you an example real fast. And I don't know if I talked to this to you last time, but it, it, you, it'll it make sense, which is, and I don't want to pick on people's laziness, but kids are lazy enough nowadays. Uh, let's where, not get started on that. We'll talk. We'll talk well, when, when, it, when it comes to kids, some when kids. Gen are, X here. Gen, oh, well, hey, Gen X, God. preach, go to church. Oh, we, we broke but, our bodies getting shit done. We did. Yeah, uh, millennials and Gen Zs. Eh, oh my whatever. gosh, they break their little pinky holding their phone. I know. We used to, hey, we were the last generation to drink out of the hose. All right. <laughs> Think about that. That was so true. <laughs> if you were smart, you'd either wait till made sure there were no bees in there or you wait till the water got cold. The, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no hot people, water. They look now, it's like, you drank out of the hose. It's like, yeah, man. It's because we were outside all the it's time. Like, yeah. All so, the damn time. Um, so the, the kids nowadays are so lazy, they won't even play their own video games. They'll watch YouTube videos of people playing I, video I games. I saw right? that, yes. Well, here's what gets interesting, is that when you're watching somebody, when they're watching that, they're basically getting the same experiences if they played it themselves, yeah. right? But yeah. what, what they don't realize is that that what's happening on screen isn't a bunch of multiplayer networking things that are happening. You're just watching a little MP4 video. Tiny. By comparison, yeah. <coughs> something was pre-recorded hours, if not days, if not <laughs> years ago. It takes almost no resources whatsoever. And you're saying, what's the difference? I go, that's just it. What's the difference? How hard would it be, if you want to talk about predestination, to set up a reality ahead of time where you make all the major choices before you go in? All you mm -hmm. need is a memory block at that stage, something yeah. like out of Dark City. One memory block, and that's it. The rest seems like it's absolutely random and spontaneous and wonderful. Um, and I'll give you a quick example, um, which is uh, the director. Um, uh, let's say you're going to make a movie, right? And you have total control of this movie. You have control over casting and script and audio and the cinematography and all this wonderful stuff, okay. right? Like the reality show I'm we're doing. Okay. You make you make whatever you want, and it's absolutely exactly the way you want. You have complete creative control. Producers don't get in the way at all, right? And then you bump your head on a door the week before the premiere, and you can't remember even making the freaking movie. And people are like, "Oh, you should go to the premiere anyway. You'll you'll snap out of it." <clears throat> So you go to the movie. To everybody else, it's just a movie. But to you, 
it's perfect because every choice that's happening on screen is absolutely the choice you would have made. It's like, yeah, this thing makes absolute sense. Yeah, I would have picked that guy and that music's perfect and everything's, it's absolutely perfect. All it took was a memory block. It's all it took. And, but to you, it was the most, one of the best experiences ever. So the short version of this is, are we living in a virtual reality or are we living in a virtual movie? that was already chosen for us before we got in here. Because if you're lock, looking about you know, efficiency, I'm not saying that God's lazy. I'm just saying he's really, really efficient, whoever. No, no, I, I completely understand what you're talking about. And when I remote view that concept, yeah. this is how I see it. Um, and, and I'm just kind of like borrowing words from other belief systems. So I hope it doesn't, you know, confuse you. But when you look at like the third dimension, you've got uh, the fourth dimension, uh, fourth dimensional characters, which some people call the astral realm or the astral plane. Yeah. And then you got uh, the third dimension. So when I see uh, the characters in the astral realm, the characters have this mist of white light. Because I see awareness and consciousness in everything. Sure. It's on some level uh, or or degree. So these fourth dimensional characters, I would call them, and, and again, it's, it's probably not the right terminology, but uh, characters in a video game that uh, there's like you as God would have awareness in that character, but then you don't decide what the character is going to do in the morning sure. you're along for the ride and you have awareness and consciousness on for the ride but then now we get to the three-dimensional experience and i'm not talking about the backdrop people right because uh, the backdrop people still have that white light mist in them but the ones that i look like are players in the game they've got this spherical thing that's created by a turtle field that they might call a soul mm -hmm. that has all the instructions and storage and stuff in it and then there's this component I call the spirit. It's like a white stick and it's um, uh, like a, uh, I don't know, canister type shape about mm -hmm. six feet tall. It's bright, you know, like a fluorescent light. Like you turn on a fluorescent light. So um, this is awareness and consciousness also, but not as a mist. It is it is really bright and I see more control over those characters mm -hmm. where you get to decide, like I wake up in the morning and okay, I'm going to eat some, you know, the concept of being human is eating breakfast. So when I, when I wake up, I get to choose what kind of breakfast that I'm going to eat and decide whether, you know, I'm going to cook it or not, or go out to eat. I get to make choices like that inside of the game. Sure. Uh, with the bright white light, more interactive. So um, I, I don't know if that explains it. No, 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 that's good. That's if that good. Make, makes sense as far as awareness. It does, no, it does. It does make sense. Absolutely does. And um, the when it comes to, I think a lot of the stuff could probably be filled in. So if you were going to do, uh, by the way, that's a playlist for Sun and the Moon. There's Thank all sorts you. of fun stuff when it comes to that. I, as far as eclipses goes, there's a wonderful video. I'll see if I can find it by uh, Mike Helmick. It's on my channel, uh, but if you want to link it, that that's fine too. The um, when you when you want to do something like if you wanted to, to pre-do a world like this, yeah, breakfast choices, food choices, anything where thought and emotion and uh, preference come in. Yeah, that, that's something you could probably, you know, you would do. But the rest of it, you could autofill. Like that way you don't have to say, oh, hey, I want to brush my teeth this many times a day, every day. You just autofill that. It's like, no, I'm going to brush my teeth 99% of the time, this many times a week. And the other time you have to make it somewhat random. There's nothing that would really be 100% anything because you don't want people figuring that out. Meaning if anything is absolutely, there's very few guarantees. This world is really funny. Yeah, it's. Yeah. There's some there's some earmarks that it is that it is deliberately done in a way to keep us distracted. The biggest thing is conflict. This world is 99.9% .9 conflict. Yeah. It doesn't matter how beautiful, how talented, how rich, how powerful you are. There is always something to complain about here. And I find that fascinating. It's like even the most beautiful people, they are slaves to the mirror. Powerful people, they just want more power. Money, never have too much of that. We were and, saying and, mirror, and, and I see it kind of like playing a game in the mirror. Sure. And uh, is what we're doing here. Yeah. A self-reflective game. Yeah. 
which const and which constantly changes every single day. Uh, you can't and you can't escape it. Meaning, even if you were a, a Buddhist monk in the Tibetan monastery, you're hovering three feet I over the ground. Those examples as well. What? Oh, I give I use those as an example. There you go. Like we are on the same wavelength here. This is I would so think cool. so. But but even if you were that guy, if you were you were hovering three feet over the ground, you still have to deal with mortality. Yeah, you may not care about earthly things or materialistic things, but you still have to deal with mortality. Sooner or later, you're going to get older. You're not going to be hovering as much. So, and I think it is done deliberately because what's outside of this world is 99% uh, free, freedom, for last, lack of a better term, non-conflict, where you can do more things. And, I, I, and you probably, again, know more than I because you journey out a whole bunch I, I they when i do journey out the um nothing's labeled it's not like welcome to dimension 352 <gasps> like that doesn't happen so i don't know where i am half the time when i'm remote viewing so <laughs> gotcha uh here is the mike helmick I'll give you the mic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This, and is for, this is for the guy that asked the question about the eclipses. Somebody said, you know, uh, what happened during that 2017 eclipse, which was also in the documentary. And a guy, a photographer, he's he's gone now. Uh, uh, there was some, some health issues. Uh, where he called me and said, look, he goes, Mark, nothing's eclipsing the sun. And I go, mm -hmm. what do you mean? He go, I go, what do you mean nothing? I go, every, you like can a see projection. The, yeah. You can see the eclipse. He goes, no, it's self-eclipsing. There is no three-dimensional object that is eclipsing the sun. It seems to be eclipsing itself no different than a moon would in a planetarium. You know, in a planetarium, you can shade the moon anywhere you want. It's just software. But we don't see suns in planetariums because it's too bright and too hard to do. We don't have the, the you don't want to spend the money on a planetarium to build something like that. So, but it occurred to me, it's like, yeah, why wouldn't you do the sun? You know, so a half moon in a planetarium, why can't you do a half sun out in, out, out here? But how would you do it? Well, you just shade the sun. If it's, if it's just a light on the ceiling, that's all you do. It's just better technology. And uh, anyway, that's a video that he, he did on it. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So check it out to get a chance. I was trying to find my eclipse pictures. Um, yeah, this, the eclipse pictures, again, I can't find over there. Like this, this, um, I, I showed people how to take a picture of what is there, the light source in the sky, yeah, whether yeah. it be the moon, the sun or whatever. Cause if you, you know, you don't want to poke like 27 times into your phone and try and figure out how to, you know, really see the sun or the moon with, with all that. Here is the back door way of doing that. You take that artifact that you see when you're taking the picture. Yeah. And I placed that on purpose at a certain place in the picture. And that's the actual light source and what it looks like. See how it looks round? Yeah. But but this is the artifact showing that it is, you know, an eclipse. And so uh, this eclipse right here, when I did this, people were like, wait a minute, nothing was in front. We, we did not. A bunch of people were videotaping that. They're like, nothing was in front of it. This is just zooming in. On that artifact. Yeah, to to that point, you know, I've told people they say, "Well, you know, what's in the sky? What are, what are we seeing?" It's like, look, when you're in the sky, in my humble opinion, you are just looking at a giant ornamental clock system that predates language. That's all you're really looking at. I mean, the the sky is really a, no more than that. I mean, it's a giant clock that you can set your seasons to. You don't even need a civilization to track to follow it. You know, just need some patience and figure out where everything is at any given point in time. And you know, it's there. You know, the not to get too much into into biblical stuff, but you know, it's for signs and wonders and inspiration. Now, come on, it's a very beautiful ornament ornamental clock system. But you could do an easier clock if you wanted to. You didn't have to have that many stars. And the the moon definitely looks or ornamental to me. That, this, is the, this is the sun the the uh light source in all of these was yeah. the sun so this is the artifact this is what our sun looks like it's a piece of technology and you can see where the beams like each one of these if you think of them as little flashlight heads sure. <laughs> pointing, pointing outward uh that's that's what you see there's you know i don't know if you've ever remember uh running into a guy named uh, eric dollard 
he had this wonderful he did some wonderful rants where they were interviewing him um i don't have a rant on my channel but uh eric e-r-i-c d-o-l-l-a-r-d and he had this wonderful it was the conviction that, that drew me in where he, they were asking about the sun and he's going he's basically saying the sun is just a converter he goes there's no fusion that's happening on the sun he goes you, you might see some stuff in the solar flares but he goes he goes the power is coming from somewhere else he was basically saying that the sun was a light bulb there was a light, but the the power, the, whatever was powering it, was not internal to the sun. And, uh, and it was funny. He was he, he was you know the fact he was saying I don't know you know he's what what power to go say I don't know nobody knows. He goes it's just one of those things that that science just makes huge assumptions on, uh, and we you know we go along with it. I made a clue after the original clues called uh, the code of credibility, which said that the general population two two quick things. I don't know how much longer you want to go, but oh, you talk talk as long as you want. Well, I go eleven hours, which is no, no, we don't want to do that. No, because eventually no. my my voice will run out. Plus, I've got a podcast I have to eventually rest up for. Oh, but oh. But, but he, where, where was I going with this? Uh, the sun, crap! I lost my train of thought for a second. Oh, let's just go to suspension of disbelief, which is. Oh no, the code of credibility. The code of credibility basically says whoever's wearing a lab coat is immediately more credible because of yeah. the stigma we put on it. Uh -huh. So, you know, a police uniform, you know, there to protect us. Uh, soldier's uniform, bravery, you know, protect the country. Firemen, save you from this. Lab coat, they're obviously more smarter, you know, more smarter. More smarter. Uh, more smarter. Than you. More smart. Uh, more smart. S M R T. <laughs> no. Um, no, they're more intelligent than you are. And uh, and and at that we we've done tests with that where we put our own people, flat earthers, with, with lab coats and an empty clipboard sitting on the street, and people would be happy to talk to you because it's like, oh, I, I got a chance to talk to an intelligent yeah. person. That sounds great. Whatever. Anyway, the code of cred credibility again, it also goes into the Bill Nye thing, which is like Bill Nye's entire career is because he wore a freaking lab coat. That was it. Um but I want to talk briefly about the uh, suspension of disbelief, which is something from the Truman Show. Oh, I'm sorry, sci-fi movies. Let me let me recommend yeah, for yeah, your friend. Yeah. So the Matrix, obviously, the first one's enough. You don't necessarily have to watch two and three because uh, that's mostly just action movies. Oh, but yeah. uh, um, uh, the 13th Floor, which I love, Dark City, which I love, uh, oh, me you, too. the the Truman Show from 1998 with with Jim Carrey, which goes into we believe the world that is presented to us. And if you want an extreme version of that, look at the 1976 movie, Logan's Run. Which, oh my uh, one, gosh, I watched that recently. Logan's yeah. Run's a fantastic movie, wow. which is, you can tell the people, basically, if you if you have enough control, you can tell the people anything you want. I mean, the fact that you're telling, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, there's no one over the age of 30. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because yeah. they don't exist because well when you when you reach the age of 30 you are you ascend right which is basically you flying up into a giant bug zapper it's, but, but they do a big ceremony and it's yeah. instantaneous Wait, so it's like, that movie i saw a movie like a long time ago where, where yeah when they got to 30 years old or something they well that's it that's logan's run Oh, okay, okay. That was that, that it. is okay, that I'm is sorry. Logan's Run. Logan's yeah, Run, okay. the whole concept, and, and you know what? As much as and people cringe at it kind of sometimes when I say this, as much as that seems barbaric, the concept behind it was brilliant. In that, if you combine that with a little bit of eugenics, there is no healthcare system. You don't need one because everyone's under the age of thirty, right? Everybody, as long as you know, aside from birth defects and something like that. You don't, you know, all you have to do is treat the the weird, odd cancer. But you remember, most of the stuff that happens to people usually happens after the age of 30. So hospitals, gone. doctors, nurses, minimal. You don't have to deal with anything. I mean, it's this young one. You know, everybody lives this maximum life. Then when they get to 30, they're done. Now, it's different from the book. The book, by the way, um, Logan's Run, which is based 1976 movie based on a 1967 book. In the book, it was age 20. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. That's too young. No, Every, no, no. 20 to 30. That's I didn't go the... out in there and start doing fun, stupid stuff till I was like 21 or 22. Exactly. 20 to yeah, 30. Those that. that's, that's your year. So I, I think that was a good move on their part. Yes. Um, another quick movie, which was um uh Oh, 
M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, which I talked about in The Clues, which was another perception thing where you took kids when they were very young, uh, and it's something you could do now, which was the whole concept, which was very wealthy people bought a giant wildlife preserve, and they set up a, an Amish town that pretended it was the 1800s, and that's what they told the kids, that it was the 1800s. That there was no technology. I remember that. There were like monsters in the woods. The monsters in the woods. Absolutely. I remember and, that. That was so weird. And you didn't know until the very end of the movie, and you know, when one of them was trying to get away and there's a highway and there's a car driving by. It's like, wait, <laughs> they, they, everything was made up. They just put, but what I found fascinating about that movie was when the older people, if the movie kept going, when the older people died, nobody's lying anymore. Meaning the kids just believe that the reality is cemented because the, as far as the kids know, they are living in the 1800s. They're wrong, but they would pass lie detector tests. It's like, oh, yeah, where do you live? I live in 1822, blah, blah, blah. You know, my, my little village is like, it would absolutely pass because that's that was that's what was told to them. So suspension of disbelief kind of goes into that, which is if you guys don't know what suspension of disbelief it is, it is a human trait that mm -hmm. we are notorious for which is why do you get emotional when you read stories or watch stories you know some people cry when they read books forget about television and movies right why you know or the movies is a better example though because you you go there you're, you're sitting with other people you know the actors on screen by name you can list some of the other movies they've been in right you know who produced the film you know you're sitting in a crowd like so why are you getting emotional watching what's on screen why suspension of disbelief our mind kicks in, and for a brief sec, you know, section, we want to believe it. Suspension of disbelief yeah. means for a, we're we're going to abandon the world that is around us temporarily and be invested in the story, which is why when the story, when the plot plot holes just sink the whole thing, you you just like, nah, I'm not buying it. I'm not invested anymore. That's when you usually turn it off or walk away. But the would apply that to where we are as a whole, and that makes a lot more sense. It's almost like we're designed to believe, we're engineered to believe simulations here or to believe the stories on multiple levels. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we are very, very, I'll give you one more thing, which is there, and I can't remember the name of the experiment, but you'll, you'll, you'll understand when I tell it to you, because sometimes it happens when you're on a train or a plane, or most of the time you're in a car, you've been, been in stop and go traffic. Then you have to be stop and go traffic. There's a car next to you and you zoned out for a second. And then yeah, all yeah. Sudden, that car moves, or maybe it didn't move. You don't know for a brief second or two, if you took your foot off the bridge. Yes. That, oh my or, gosh. Yeah. That moving, right? Perspective. Here, yeah. Yeah. Not, that's not you. You don't That's have a frame of reference. All humans. Mm -hmm. uh, they did tests in, in universities years ago where they put people in wooden cars on a track and there was a wall in front of them, right? And sometimes they would move the car and sometimes they would move the wall. And nobody, oh my gosh. Oh. Nobody, nobody could figure out, nobody could figure out what was moving for sure. It was always you know, like a, you know, just, it was just 50-50. Yes. There was, there was no, because we're, that we're built, which is why simulators work so well on us, which is why, by the way, some people get ill just by watching roller coaster movies on television. And this is back before HD, you know, people, I have, I know people, I still get some vertigo, like playing the old Mario Kart from back in the day. It's like, I can't do it. It's like, uh -huh. oh my God, I just, you know, your, your eyes kick in and, and weird things happen. So you combine all those things and it seems that wherever we are now is very easily, very easily um, manufactured, I shouldn't use the word, created to where we are, you know, we there's a 99, again, which makes sense, there's a 99% chance that most people are going to be fooled by it, which is what you would want. That's kind of like a line out of the matrix, which is most people, which is kind of, I hate to say this, but that's how it's supposed to go. Conformity builds empires. And is, and sorry, I have to address your, your background people, which is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be calling them by the right name. I don't know. Well, I mean, NPCs takes too long, but background people is good enough. Background noise. Background people, I like it, actually. It's pretty simple. Yeah. I may actually, day, it's just semantics anyway. I may steal that. I mean, NPCs is the formal term, but really, background people is good enough, um, okay. which is. Um, when you're creating some sort of, when we create our reality, you know, the, the virtual stuff that we make, I don't care what it is. 
we end up creating an army of background people yes. in it. it doesn't matter how many players are involved even if there was only one player in the game you still need that army to get things done yes and it started out simple back in the day way back when, when games were new kids um, there were no background people. There was just notes on trees or a note on the ground. It's like where you had to go next, right? It's like, uh. oh, hey, there's a note on the tree, right? Well, eventually somebody made the, the wonderful decision. It's like, hey, why don't we turn that tr that note into a person? Oh, hey, that, that could work, right? So then you turn that note into a person. So now instead of yeah. trying to the tree, you walk over the person. It's like, hey, where do you think I should go next, right? And then the person would be like, but the person's always next to the tree. And then eventually it'd be like, well, maybe we can have the guy wander around. You have to find that guy. It's like he's not next to the tree. He's got his own life. He's going to start walking around. And then eventually <laughs> this guy's got a family and he lives in a town and he's got all sorts. He does all sorts of things. Sometimes he's there. Sometimes he's not. And it just goes on from there to where now, I mean, come on. I mean, you know, there's background people all over the place. We've all seen them. You know, their, their responses, the key to background people is the responses are limited. I'm not going to get into it right now tonight. Maybe a different thing. Oh, but yeah. You, there are, that's why it's, this circles back to the Turing test, which was done by Alan Turing, the guy, the lead from the movie, The Imitation Game, which was really? Alan Turing. Came yeah, we up. have circled all the way back to that. Holy crap. That's how, we'll, that's how we'll wind this that's thing. That's how the intelligent people do. Which, which is. Alan Turing, when he first designed the first computer in 1950, five years after the war ended, he said, you know, eventually we're going to have to come up with a test that we can give to machines to find out if they're machines or not. You know, if, if we get to the point where we're not sure if they're yeah, actually yeah. machines. And he was, he was thinking way ahead because back then, of course, you, you, you didn't. But like to your point, you type in, it's like, are you a real person? Well, in, in chat boxes, it's getting tougher and tougher to do that. Um, I don't do I ever think they're they're gonna do it with, with real robots? No, probably not, mostly because it's a power source issue. We can't come up with a power source to make the robots walk around and do what we want them to do because it's it's too it's too limited. Right now it's just batteries. We need a fusion reactor, but you can't do that because then it could be weaponized and maybe it could turn any robot into a weapon and it'd be awful. Um it'd basically it'd be a walking bomb, it'd be awful. So so anyway, Turing came up with what he, and there is no official Turing test. A Turing, a Turing test is just a series of questions that you come up with or somebody else comes up with to ask a machine to see if you can trip them up. You can ask a question, you know, of Siri, you know, like, like, what do you think love is? You know, something like that. Or tell me, tell me what, you know, what your what your experience is with, with have you ever been infatuated with someone? You know, a question that a machine should not be able to answer. That's, that's, yeah, what a yeah. Turing, that's what a Turing test is. And so are there NPCs out there or background people that would fail the Turing test? Yeah. Do you want to push them on that? No. Yeah. No, there was a kid the other day. In fact, I did a, just did a story yeah. on it last Tuesday where he called an 11-year-old kid called some 20 something year old you called him out and said you're an npc guy grabs a knife starts chasing him around the streets so no it's a terrible idea got the kid by the way didn't kill him but the uh, kid had to go to the hospital and that guy's going to jail but the point is is that just because they're background people doesn't mean but were those backdrop people what that that story that you just told of like i'm gonna stab you were those backdrop people in the Could backdrop be. story? Could, yeah, I know. Now, know. Now, now, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's like we just don't know. Uh, yeah, we don't know. But the chances are, I will, let me kind of wind this down with this. Oh, okay. The chances are that there are a lot of background people and very few real people. Um, because, well, I mean, to God, technically, we're all NPCs, but basic NPCs, basic background, let's call them that. I, basic. I've kind of calculated by what other people have said between yeah. uh, one real person, whatever that is, a uh, real person to 5,000 backdrop people to up to 100,000 or more uh, backdrop people. For um, one. I, I'd go somewhere in between because you could have... Mm -hmm. You could have a city of a hundred thousand people, you know, a hundred thousand people in a city, and I've seen a number around here. Um, 
you could have more than one player in there and still pull it off. The problem That's with what I was saying between 5,000 non player characters and, and 100,000. 100, yeah, yeah. In it, fact, it definitely. Like, if you're going to go to a football game, let's see, in this big stadium or whatever, maybe there's more, um, you know, backdrop people at that that football game. Maybe there are the, the, <laughs> this is a quote I've been trying to, I've been working on over the last year or so, which is the problem with multiplayer situations is the multiplayers meaning it's not the background people right background people you can put as many background people as you want it's the real players interacting with each other because when they interact with each other oh i'm sorry one more sci-fi movie for you um oh, yeah, the, yeah. the adjustment bureau that's oh, one yeah. of my faves yeah, yeah. and, and that, that, really that actually sense. goes into the the interactions which is you have, and they didn't talk about the background people, but they talked about how people, when they interact with each other, it's, there's a little bit of a collision, potentially, that you could change each other's paths. Yes. So, and what I'm getting is, if those paths weren't agreed on ahead of time, then you've got the chance of, of potentially random disruptions, meaning... You know, you could be going, going down a path because you bumped into another real player where you didn't want to. And then it goes into, well, if if we are, if we voluntarily went into a place like this, would you waste time with an outcome that you didn't want? Meaning the hero's journey, you know, the journey eventually point A to point Z, you want that point Z to be what it is. Now, the way to get there may change a little bit, but eventually that point Z is where you want it to be if you could set it ahead of time. I don't believe in random things at, at, at that degree. So anyway, put to, back to your point real fast which is, yes, thousands of background people, thousands for every one person that, that's in here. Thousands, definitely, because you don't need any more than that. And again, it's what we build when yeah. we build our systems. We build, we because we put the background in people in first. We put all the thousands, thousands, thousands of background people in. I guess before, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, before a single player is involved because the background people have to keep everything running. And then make it believable. Yeah, and and again, not to not to say that a that a person couldn't come in, a real person come in. It's like, oh, hey, I want to be a dry cleaner for thirty years. <laughs> what chances are they're not going to? No, I'm you. not picking on dry cleaners. I'm just saying that it's... you know the the that the more the more steady heartbeat the the background people tend to be probably you know if they look if they feel to you like a background person you're looking it's like man that person's got nothing interesting going on probably a background person mm -hmm. so there you go anyway i i could talk about this for a long time is there any last minute things you want to <laughs> throw at me before i no uh, i think it's so cool that you joined us and just you know, let us know what's going on with you and yeah, yeah. And, and all this because you you kind of started something a little bit. I guess we were kind of before that it's time, uh, but it's played out to where it's just kind of like commonplace as they're doing all this disclosure that it's yeah. just like, well, it's flat. So now what do we do, you know, moving forward since we don't really have to prove it's flat anymore? All we're trying to do right now is out as many people as possible. Um, I mean, getting people, you know, beforehand, like the, the first major basketball star that got into this was Kyrie Irving from uh, from Cleveland. And he came out on a podcast after he won the, the title. And he, you know, he said, oh, yeah, I'm totally into flatter, blah, blah, blah. And other people tried to come out, but the media just attacked him. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're trying to 90 percent of our of the people that are in the flat earth uh, are still in the closet because they, they're worried about friends and family and coworkers, And I get that. I absolutely get it, which is, it's tough to even sub. Why, why would you even sub to a flat earth channel if all the subs are public record? You know, if you sub to a flat earth channel and I see that, it's like, oh, hey, you in the flat earth? So I, I understand that, but we're trying to make it comfortable enough to where people are like, you know, we're, we're trying to throw enough weight on the scale to where it's more common to be, it's cooler to be open-minded about it than to be closed-minded about it, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to like the yeah. stream. Uh, oh, like yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> Let Mark know you like him being on here. Again, I would if, love if, to have you back. I, I talk be, about all kinds of stuff that you want to talk about. I'd be happy to come back and talk yeah. about whatever you want. 
Uh, if you, anyone that want, you know, that likes my stuff or is just curious, just type in flat earth mark into any search engine, you will get to my things eventually. Um, my, my YouTube thing is really the only thing I run. So if you find me in any other platform, it's probably being run by somebody else, but that's fine. I mean, people don't troll me too badly. So, um, and, and again, if you want to see a snapshot of what we did six years ago behind the curve documentary amazon itunes i don't know if you can order it through netflix or not anymore can't remember i, I don't know i don't know because you had sent it to me so i, I said yeah i sent you a copy it of it me, so if anyone wants a copy by the way send to me I'll, I'll or send me an email I'll, I'll shoot you a low grade you know it's only like a gig i'll send it to you well that's okay i got I'm the point sure I, i'm sure i won't get into too much trouble the the director hated us <laughs> by the end which was good. It worked out in our favor because they they were not flat earthers, but they uh, but in their their hatred of flat earth and the the them poking at us, it made it safe to watch. Meaning there were people that were like, oh, well, you know, even again, even the title behind the curve, it's like, oh, they're they're poking at people because behind the curve means they're kind of dumb. So I'm gonna go in and watch them <laughs> and, and make fun of the flat earthers. Double and entendre. We <laughs> did seriously, and it worked. People felt safe wow. watching it. And again, the first 20 minutes, I will always say this about the movie: the first 20, 30 minutes of it, people thought it was a fake movie. They thought it was, they thought it was absolutely manufactured, that I was an actor, that everybody was actors. And you did a great job, by the way. You looked great in the movie. Well, Your you. hair looked fantastic. Right. Uh, but thank you. Uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I appreciate all the kind words. Uh, I, but I have seen photographers. Met you. You are so far more photogenic than me. I've had professional photographers look at their camera like it was broken. They're like, "What the hell?" I spent like. Sure. Sorry. You are... It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We all can't be wonderful. What was the saying? Beautiful people don't know who to trust because you know you're liked because you're beautiful. Um, but what I was getting at was uh, when I was in the audience watching people, they were they thought it was a fake movie, and so uh, there was this weird moment. You know, you you knew it wasn't fake because uh, you you knew ahead of time. But yeah, but because people, like you know, I know you. Yeah, mm -hmm. but people when they were watching it, all of a sudden it's like. They, there was this moment I saw it on their face. I'm sitting right next to them. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> those aren't actors. Those are real people. You know, they're like elbowing their friends. It's like, those are real people. That's actually happening. Right. And and it was it was great. There was, you know, the conference. I, I'll leave you with this story, which was there was an editor in Hollywood who did that very thing. They uh the the director and those guys, they sent him the thing completely no context whatsoever it's just watch this we're not even going to tell you what it's about just watch it right yeah. and he sees it and he goes wow he goes you guys are holding out on me he goes where did you get the money for this film and he's going what are you talking about he goes well the amount of money you had to pay all those actors yeah. it's like they played it so perfectly and he's going those weren't actors man that was actual flat earth people and he's like what so what are you talking about he goes that conference happened <laughs> you actually went to a flat earth conference go, Dude, yeah, we, were yeah. for, we were there for three days it's like i gotta watch this again this is so weird and that's what i mean again i we there was this wonderful moment where i remember that summer it was the same summer that uh lady gaga did um a star is born the, the remake oh, okay yeah yeah and they was like movies to watch this summer which was lady gaga you know the star is born behind the curve it was like you know the in the documentary section i'm going and i sent that to the producer, like yeah that's what i'm talking about <laughs> like it was awesome we didn't win any awards anywhere because the topic was just so out there but we always made the 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 ranking cut we were always and it's like you know and then i mean again the film festivals the they they just kept you know kept saying it off year after year to you know wonderful wonderful stuff so anyway i gotta run oh god but thank you was, for being on thank you mark for spending time with us i would to get to my, know you thank you so much and it was you guys will have him on here again so and yeah if you guys need any links anything special again my email address is well you could always post my email address but my email address all my contact info is in the description box of my videos so i am not hard to find you could Google me or you could chat GPT me or AI me or whatever the hell you think you're going to do. And I'd be happy to talk to you. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. And you have a wonderful evening. Thank you guys for joining. And I guess we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Maggie.